illuminating different dimensions and all of reality. Let it be known, the epic legend of the Duelist. You say that I'm a poison, I'm a game. Part is pleasure, part is pain. Mm. And when we lie down, oh, we stay within a secret hideaway. Come and leave. Welcome, Duelists, to a special presentation of the Yu-Gi-Oh! World Championship Qualifiers that were, happened last week on Sunday. Now, I'm going on a new content journey, and this is one of the new pieces of content that I think that you would enjoy. So please, observe a highly edited and condensed version of the live stream of all five featured matches. Please enjoy that. Utilize the timestamps and also my boys, if you want to support me and you're watching this during the premiere, thanks and super chats are always welcome. But I appreciate you guys as always. Make sure you utilize everything in the description in the comment section below to toggle this video. And as always, keep it dank. It is game number one here in top 64 of our North American World Championship qualifier. We are mere a few rounds from finding out who the other four represent. All right, so this is Heroes versus Splight, um, Runic, and I think Furhire. So I think this is going to be a really interesting match. But of course, y'all already know I'm rooting for the boys with the Heroes because obviously I just recently started playing Heroes. So Heroes is, you know, that, that's what I'm on right now. So, you know, I want to enjoy some Hero match. Really established a board, and it looks like he's going to start with okay. Runic Destruction. All right, Runic Destruction <laughs> to <laughs> Special <laughs> Summon. Summon's Hugin. All right. Hugin's going to be okay. able to activate to search. All right. It looks like really, really cool. Nathaniel does so not have a response. Well, he doesn't have any response. A lot of players that don't have responses just spread their hands on the board like that. I imagine just one that he can burn. That looks like a runic slumber. All right. Okay. Banishes one off the top of Nathan's deck. Do you think the banishing off yeah. the top of the deck? Those banishes definitely hurt can hurt the hero deck. deck. I mean, hitting that's pretty good. Yeah. Because I'm sure he has one ofs and two ofs in the deck that banishing off top is dangerous. So he's brave to even play heroes like in this format period. Okay, well, he's cooking. He's going to have to show it up here. He's, he's cooking. Strong start for him. He's has access to the He's cooking and he's uninterrupted and he's cooking. So Bruce is actually putting on some pressure right now. Getting access to jet, getting that start starter so that he's able to play around any tool that he Yeah. He's cooking. Likely going for sprite carrot instead of sprite red being able to play around something along Well, there's fountain. He's got to draw three. That's disgusting. He's disgusting. Ah, uh, he's all right. So he hit mills three off top. He got fusion destiny and mass change. That's disgusting. And then he's gonna draw three. 
Gross. Make sure to shuffle the rest of the deck here after this fight starter. Yeah, he's like, right, you get, right. Give him the cut of fate. That's right. Seal this his fate. Right here for yep. Bruce. We see him right. <laughs> Seal his fate. Draw three. One, two, three. What is Bruce gonna do with these three busted three cards he just drew? That's disgusting. He's in think phase right now. Yeah, he's think phase. Yeah, I love it when a duelist go to the think phase in these top ranks. They really, you can really see them, like the gears moving in their head as they try to create a scenario, you know, that's gonna be to their advantage, obviously. Looks like he's considering it as well. If you commit the Dompa, you can go into something along the lines of Sprite Sprint. All right. Send the Rex to the graveyard. So he's, so he's extending. The back the from the grave, he's got Dompa. He, he's going full package. He's going, he's full package right now. He's going all the way in. He's got Rex. All right, Rex is like the main engine card now. So he's literally hit all three of his engines. So this is a phenomenal open for Bruce, so. Nathaniel, this is going to be tough for him to like fight back against. He's going to have a lot of responses. There's Donner for hire. Yeah. All these monsters for hire are quite strong. Because and a lot of responses are going to be in his hand. that are going to be quick play spells because of the runic uh, stuff. So he's going to have the runic stuff plus fur hire set up. Monsters for hire. This is ideal. This is essentially the main choke point of the for hire strategy. You're able to use Rex now to add a for hire spell. So he's going to grab rookie for hire. Uh, all right. Let him swap out a for higher monster, essentially. That could yeah, Nathaniel has to read all these cards. That flashing fire? That looks like flashing fire, yeah. He's going to be able to summon another monster here. Going for another copy mm -hmm. of the game. Okay. Woo! He wants to activate effect again. Jesus. Like what is that? Four cards in hand? Second copy of Fountain. Wait, we got to keep our counter going. So far, he's drawn three extra thing. cards. Yes, three cards okay. so far. Oh god, there's another fountain. Runic Fountain. The last oh copy of Runic Fountain is now semi-limited. So the cool thing is, even if it is semi-limited, once he activates this fountain on top of the new fountain... Yeah, I mean, this is crazy. Like, he's, he's got more plays. Like, this is absolutely insane. Like, he's going deep into his engine. Jerry to add back the other fountain from the graveyard. Oh, yes, yeah, so you can still keep recycling those fountains. Okay. So now he summons the beat for hire. Now he's going to special summon Fargo. Uh, well, that's going to be lucky Fargo. for the monster zone, unfortunately. Not going to go for... Too many draws. Okay. okay. I think you know, Fargo like special summons so and yeah. and then but and I think he special summons the negate or something like that. Add a monster for hire from his deck to the hand. Fargo so strong. He can add Rex to my hand. Oh yeah, he add Rex. Okay. And then Fargo is going to summon. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. He can summon that guy. Yeah. Rafale. And Rafale is the well negate. So. For its effect, to negate mm -hmm. a monster effect. Which is really powerful. It also has the awesome effect. He's going to be able to activate the top three mm. cards of the deck since he has three monsters for hire on the field. He is going uninterrupted and is tearing up Nathaniel's deck. Like, how is he going to come back from this? I'm going to grab Runic Tip. Another copy of Runic Tip. It does have to be other for hire that we believe it doesn't count itself. Oh, it doesn't count itself. Okay. Okay. Other monsters for hire. Yes. Yes. That's pretty good, man. <laughs> yeah, that's really good. <laughs> that's pretty good. So now he's gonna. Looks like he's thinking about using beats effect. He's about to summon a monster for hire from his hand. All right. Summon that Rex that he added to the hand. All the small for monsters for hire have that effect that they can special summon a for hire monster from hand. I can't believe he's going uninterrupted. Trigger the effect when you summon that monster. I can't believe he's going uninterrupted. Okay. Now, where do you think he's going to go from here? Where do you think he wants to end? Like IP Masquerina. Still has IP. He's got IP. He's got Rafale. Oh wait, where's Rafale? Oh he oh he used it to link. I think I think he can maybe bring Rafale back with something. He's probably got a he probably got a means to bring Rafale back. Alright. Alright, so let's see what he does. Okay. Stratos. Response. Response. Ooh, negate. Book of the moon. Book of the Moon. No, no, no. No, no, no. 
Stratos effect. Mm-hmm. Okay. We got Ferris. Okay. Drew three. Disgusting. So gross. Okay. He's got everything in his hand. All right, what's Nathaniel gonna do here? All right, summon, summon Ferris. Ferris gets red. I mean, he's got the heroes to lose. All right, Rune tips. He's gonna search. He's got to. Dr he's drawn three cards and he searched any card that he wants. Like, come on. Like, come on. So the I mean, like Ferris is. Oh my God! Not yeah, Miracle Fusion. So he's got he he hit Miracle Fusion. He hit Mass Change, and he hit um um uh, Fusion Destiny. He hit three of his fusion spells, but he did not hit Polymerization. And and of course he does have I think a second Fusion Destiny at least. So I think we saw one when he drew it when he opened. That boy's gonna chain. That boy's gonna chain. <laughs> well, <laughs> well. <laughs> Let me read that shit. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. It's a continuous trap. Let's go. <laughs> That's hilarious. That is hilarious. Let me read that bullshit. <laughs> Not honestly. If he had a read the card and comprehended what like what it said and like understood it was a trap and waited for him to use the effect, he could have used his move. Oh shit. Never mind. He's had uh um uh droplets. Jeez. Jeez. <laughs> ah, he's got them droplets. Take us out. Oh, that's sure. He's leaving the photo. Let him draw. Uh, so now all he has is his runic spells. And all those runic spells are once per turn. He's already used a couple. Uh, a couple of good ones, anyway. So. That's pretty busted. That was, a w that was busted. Like, yeah, obviously he wasn't expecting a droplets, but that was a well played well timed droplet like you and using the hero cards like effectively oh slight starter oh can he put the negate out the orange one i think is it carrot no 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 you need another sprite on the board or something right oh no no he put out a the carrot i mean that, oh that's not carrot that's the orange one never mind no red red that's red I don't know spice stuff. <laughs> I don't know spice stuff. All right, let's check this out. Oh, he's put in denier. He's feuding destiny and dropped denier and malicious. Let's go. Look at it. Look on his face. <laughs> he's like, uh oh, I'm in danger. <laughs> he's cooking. Let this hero cook. Look, he's going. He's going right now. All right. Malicious. He's about to do the denier thing. Wait. He's entering into think phase. Okay, wait. Hold on a second. He, he thinks he might have. He's like, could it be? Could it be game time? I think he uh, he's in think phase mode right now. What is he contemplating? I think I think he's I think he's factoring it all up. Like, okay, wait. I think I've got it. <laughs> Look at Nathaniel. Look at him cooking. Look at him thinking. He's like, yes. All right. Look, here he goes. <laughs> All right. First, okay. First off, he's getting his malicious combo going with Denier. Denier lets him use malicious uh, again. Cross Crusader. Summon back the Denier. Pop the malicious for 
Who could it be? Who is it gonna be? Let's go. Let's go. Oh! <laughs> look at him. Look at his face. He's, he's doing the rock eyebrow. He's doing the rock eyebrow. Bruce is like, not me. <laughs> oh my god, this is excellent. All right, battle time. Malicious attacks beat. All right. Denier. Denies the life. Okay. Okay. Cross Crusades. Cross is the Bedia. Oh, he's going to make sure the Crusader can't attack. Okay, and I'm Nani. Ooh. Goes in match and liquid. Man. That's probably his only copy of Liquid Soldier. I mean, with the Miracle Fusion gone, I think that's okay. Yeah. I mean, at this, at this point, kind of doesn't matter what he mills. Cause we're in we're in the midst of the battle now. This is this is getting spicy. This is what you get all about. Alright, here we go. Oh yes! <laughs> the big suck! <laughs> He's it. <laughs> they tell you it's like <laughs> Yoink! <laughs> <laughs> Pop. <laughs> yes. 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 Wow. What a move. What a turn. What a turn. Look at it. What a turn. He made that man put his hand down in class in respect. He made him slow down. That turn was so mind blowing. It shook him. It shook him. I don't think so. All right. What is he going to do? That was fantastic. Yeah, what is he gonna do? She he's like, ooh, it's like a haze. He's like, what am I gonna do? Has DP and plasma trip. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what are you gonna do? Really both. He really wants both here. He has runic tip, I think. Fountain. No response. Okay. Runic Fountain. I mean, at this at this point, a lot of resources have been used. So, you know, we'll see. Yeah. Yeah, what can he do? I didn't really get a good look at his hand, so I don't I don't really know what he can do. He had his hand like a little tucked away. You know Plasma's locking it down, and he's got that big monster on him too. I think, I think uh, Rafale is like 28 or something like that. Hmm. Yeah, he's thinking about Donner. No effect on Donner, though. Make sure Donner doesn't say anything silly. Oh, so Dompa's kind of like a rescue cat kind of thing? That's kind of cool. Wiz, that was my dueling stack when they first came out over there. It was oh, so awesome. Mm. You could dueling still going strong. Tribute and summon yeah, two monsters. Like that's kind of busted. I mean, mean or as Nate Daniel said, said, that's pretty good, man. <laughs> yes, definitely. Uh, I used Carrot and Rex. The judge stepping in, making sure cards are used correctly. Sure good job, Mr. Really judge. Good. Do that job. It's always funny when Yu-Gi-Oh players don't have cards in their hands. It's like they don't have anything to do with them. <laughs> like literally, like Nathan, look at him. No cards in hand, nothing to do with him. Just chilling. <laughs> That's why I love watching these games. It's so interesting just to watch, like you know, the behavior. All right. So he popped Rafale. I remember all the monsters are weakened by plasma. I mean, not plasma, uh, by DPE due to uh, all the heroes in the graveyard. So I don't know 
if Bruce remembered that. Like, I don't know. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because it's, cause it's like, you know, there's no way. There's no reminders for that. And obviously, Nathaniel's not just going to say and remember. I know. He could, yeah, he doesn't know. Nathan is like, I survived. Oh, it's cook time. He survived. He survived and made it to another turn. That means it's time to cook. Yum, 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 yum. Tink. Entering battle? That's really all he needs to do, right? He's been doing cleanup. This ain't the start of cleanup. He's trying to finish cleaning up. All right. What are we doing? Piece by piece. There's still the Rex in the graveyard to try to like put some more monsters on the ground. Smacky, smacky. As long as he doesn't really have access to a big monster to go into the battle phase and clear the plasma, the Phoenix is more smoothly answering everything else. Both copies of Runic Fountain are in the graveyard. There is the Jerry that normally has it back. There's only ever really one in the extra deck that's already Set one card. Yeah, he's going to keep DP. that carry equipped for sure. You're not even, maybe not even ever giving it back just to play around Pot of Avarice. It's so good to see Destroyer Phoenix Enforcer back in action. What it's is he going to do? Cards. Okay, it looks like Bruce is going Who's gonna to pop that Rex? the Rex for hire from his graveyard. Ugh, he, oh. for hire. <laughs> he was no, thinking on that. Fine. Rex was getting bent. <laughs> Rex was like, oh, sweet <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I mean, he's just been summoning monsters to uh, just defend himself on the top. Ooh. Nope. 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 Not while it's in the spell trap zone. Yeah, not in the spell trap zone. Ooh. 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 Okay. <laughs> Neither not realizing that, but kind of lucked Yikes. out there. But still okay. Oh, still that's okay. cool. Mayhem for her. <laughs> He's in trouble. Bruce can draw to one card and Down to one card. That's crazy to see this runic player that has so much advantage on the first turn down to one card. Oh, well, there's a flashing fire. Okay, that's maybe what okay. he needed. He's gonna be able to start using monster effects here. He's trying to chain uh, the Phoenix Enforcer to protect the cards in his the top of his deck. He's gonna get rid of the plasma and the Dompa, but then he still has access to Rex. Maybe that can wow. start a uh, comeback play. That was like the card he needed to draw here. Wow. Not okay. Not it quite just yet. Uh, both these decks so resilient. Oh, listen, he's chaining the red now. Could be okay. a bit of a mistake because Phoenix Enforcer uh, doesn't target Rex effects. But what is that face down though? What did Nathaniel set? Okay. Nope. He's like, nope. Alright. Clearly knows. He's here. He brought heroes like I am the true hero. You can never get past. Nani? If he draws a monster here, it's over. Oh, well, that's Only one game away from moving away into the top 32. One step closer to the world championship. All right. Not going to let it go easily. Starting off with Runic Tip into Freezing Curses. He understands the match now. There's one copy of Stratos gone. All right. Bruce is ready to fight now. Bruce is like, I am not going to let you steal a game from me. And Nathaniel again, hand down, no response. So there's no telling. When you're playing against the man, I love this, man. Love this so much. They're usually just trying to deal with that, especially when you see something like Forbidden Droplet happen game one. You don't expect to get in the hand right now. Yeah, I don't think I would. So I think Bruce is going to go kind of greedy, potentially go wide, especially when you see Forbidden Droplet rather than Dark Lord no more against a deck that's so aggressive. You can't really afford to not do the damage, even though I don't think he needed to do the damage with the field that he was putting up. Yeah, it looks like Bruce did hard draw the rookie for hire, so he's able to tribute to Hugin, especially summon beat. Beat. Get ready for the beat down. Imagine means he already has Rex in his hand. Yep, that is the only target for the dinosaurs. Woo! Bruce is playing fast too. He's only got. Look at the time. Time is low too. Like that's another thing that you got to keep in mind at these high levels, like or at any type of tournament level, like. That first game, you gotta know if when to call it. Like you gotta know, like if you're winning, 
like hurry up and win. But if you're losing, hurry up and lose. Because you're gonna need those Nani! Nathan. I was wrong. There will be monster effects from the hand. That's a pretty good one. <laughs> That's a good one. At least he was able to add two cards to his hand before it happened, but oh, I see. he's going to be cut off from that using Runic Fountain this turn. That makes sense because it looks like the, it was a draw phase activation. Oh, no. Uh, so not oh, no. Both those effects were changed. Oh, no. Both of them. Yeah, the triggers on the summer. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, no. Oh, he normal summoned the reg. Oh, no. Oh no! I thought he used the beat effect for sure. <laughs> that is not oh, good. Slight punish there then. Because uh, beat definitely has the effect of summoning a monster for hire from your hand. Oh, he so he earlier. didn't he didn't use beat's effect, so yeah. he missed out on beat, and he also missed out on like whatever else he was gonna do. So his whole strategy might be broken this for this turn. And if his strategy is broken for this turn, and Nathaniel claps back with an OTK, it's over. Droll. I mean, oh, funny like thing, Droll and Lockbird. I pulled a collector's rare Droll and Lockbird. Pretty cool. I think it's worth like 50 bucks or 100 bucks or something like that. I don't know. I'm pretty sure it's expensive, but Mannequin Cat. Mm. Is Droll level two or level one? I think Droll is one. So if he plays a win, he'll be able to summon. I can't really tell. Can't really see. Oh, Dampa. No, Dampa. Oh. Hmm. Free extender there. Oh, I see. Now he's going to link away the mannequin cat and the beat. Okay. Well, that's a good plan. Donner. Donner. Donner, okay. Donner can potentially summon back as many monsters from the graveyard here. Yeah. Can I read this real quick? You did it with dinosaur. Okay. Hmm. He's going. He's got. He's got a little play going. As long as his play doesn't okay, include you know, any he's searching, being he's good. Roll and lock bird. Okay. Yeah. He's not necessarily out of it. He just needs to be able to. Into the it, that, actually, in Droll also locks out his um, runic combo completely, which is great. <laughs> that Droll is disgusting. Woo! Really vulnerable to a couple forms of interruption mm. here. Yeah, Bruce, Bruce still yeah. trying to find a way to get the full mm. No, mm. it's a stuff from from back. Oh, okay. You can't use the effect of the Man, well, if there's like a droll and lockbird, but it was like Ash Blossom's effect. <laughs> so you can't. So, so now you can't summon from deck either. <laughs> Banned. Actually, no. It'll probably be unlimited for a long time. And then after they sell a thousand gazillion copies, then banned. As long as he uses it in the draw phase, that could be good enough. All right, and he can he can actually get some stuff going um, next turn because if that's the right like quick play spell, and then he I think he can draw one I think he can draw um, yeah he can draw a couple cards. Oh man, oh man, he dropped Shadow Mist. Okay. What is Nathaniel gonna do here? If Nathaniel has game time, man, okay, he's not gonna make it hard, uh, easy for him. He's trying to destroy card for Nathaniel so he can draw with Bulgo. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and target your Solitaires, right? Forbidden Droplet. Hey! Oh, Bruce's face! Bruce's face! Bruce is like, what the fuck? <laughs> kind of Damn it, dog. Oh, man. <laughs> I'll say it for you, Bruce. The hero, you what the? the <laughs> 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 Alright, this is the type of stuff making you just want to. This is the type of stuff. Yeah, he didn't have to. Yeah, he didn't have to do that. He could have. 
he could have used yeah he could have used droplet and just drop the droll and and the droll in his hand you just need to stop the dump on the rafal and the other two cards don't matter right because if there's not another destruction yeah he just could stop the because because he had a i saw the another a second copy of droll in his hand so why i don't know but i don't know he's he's the he's the man he can cook, no cards in hand, you know. To on I literally have a bird's eye view, and I'm over here telling him what he should do. Can't do that. <laughs> Let this man cook. Let him cook. <laughs> All right. He's going. Bruce is looking like, God damn it. <laughs> I'm sorry, Bruce. <laughs> I'm sorry, Bruce. <laughs> Yeah, he, <laughs> this man controls destiny. He can't be stopped. Vanishing the Ferris here. Add a poppy of polymerization. With the Vision Hero Vion's effect. Gonna fuse using. Oh, start off with linking in the extra crusader. Let him cook. Let him cook. Oh, oh. Hey, let's go. All right. He's gonna use that monster to target uh, two heroes. Like target a fusion monster with with two specific names. It's gonna be like Neos and somebody else. So Neos. Okay, so he just got Neos. So okay. So it must be one of those Neos fusions he chose. A hero we need. A hero lives. A solid. A hero lives. A hero's never lived. Malicious. Link to Cross Crusade. Oh no, Wonder Driver. Oh, it's time. Polly. Liquid and Neos, what is that going to make? Oh, oh my god. Let's go. All right. If it's special something, you can add one card. All right, let's go. All right. And if it was using normal monster, which it was, you can special summon a level 7 or lower Elm Tree monster from your deck or extra deck that cannot be normal summon or set, ignoring its summoning conditions. All right, here we go. Liquid. Liquid. Looks like he's going to add a rivalry to the world and Death Near Denier, discarding the Denier. Okay. Uh, still got a long ways to go here. Is he going to use the effect of Wonder Driver to be able to add back hmm. that polymerization or any of the. Because Wonder Driver does. Yeah, that's why I kind of think, of yeah, that's that's kinda think he should have kept the Ferris, but I don't know. Again, hindsight is 20 20. This is just crazy. As, as, you, yeah, as they say, you know? Infernal Rage come out. It's, it's the coolest looking, like, flame wing man to me. Ooh, sunrise. sunrise. Ooh. Oh, no. He's getting Miracle Fusion. And then he's going to... Oh, that's why he hasn't used Wonder Driver yet. Because he can get the... <laughs> Spice. Let him cook. That's crazy because he was blowing his deck up with all those mills with the runic stuff. But as soon as he put in Droll and Lockbird, that shut the whole thing down. Crazy. Very sneakily threatening cards. <laughs> Drow and lock boy. Seven minutes left. You better hurry up. First, he's gonna go with Miracle Fusion. How many Fusion cards are we gonna use this turn? Bam! I just want to see Bruce's face when the Fusion Destiny comes down. Huh? This much. Could it be? Absolute zero! Let's go! Let's go! Yes, you madman! You absolute madman! Let him! Oh, he's going. He's going. The whole board is capped. The whole board is capped. Let's <laughs> go. And he's got the destiny. And he's got destiny. Let's go. Let's go. Bruce. Look at Bruce. What is he going to do? Bruce. Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> Bruce! <laughs> Bruce! <laughs> That's it. Nathan Christmas hey. wins with his hero deck, a true hero. Can't be mad, because like that was amazing. What an epic match. Congratulations to Nathan Christmas on an epic win. He's the hero we need, the hero we believe in. The hero we deserve. The hero we deserve. But we'll be right back to hear from Nathan Christmas about the match, so don't go anywhere. We'll see you soon. Starting off, it's Kamal from Fort Lauderdale. His favorite card is Treeborn Frog. His opponent, we have Ryan from the Rocky Mount NC, and his favorite card is Red Eyes Dark Dragoon. 
All right. So this is Pearly versus Brandon. Brandon Despi. I believe so. Pretty interesting. Never seen Pearly before, but Brand is definitely more my speed in terms of like understanding. So it'll be interesting to see what's going on here. Game phase. Classic. Classic. Classic opening play. No Ash. Okay. Well, Branded lost. Well, no Ash for him. Branded Fusion. Position to be in. You definitely don't want to be on the receiving end because Branded Loss is now going to shut out all your opportunities to respawn as long as the last thing that Come on, does not like this. We're going to go for Despian Tragedy. Okay. Because we're set to the graveyard by a card effect that is also going to trigger in the next chain. Rebellion. Alright. Well. Chain link two, chain link three loss. Well, yeah, there's a cost to mm -hmm. the rebellion that is going to be. Like oh, he dropped a gimmick puppet. Nah, he painful. he's a yeah. memer. He he's made all the way top thirty two with this. Crazy. I wonder how many people he gimmick puppeted all the way to top thirty two. That's crazy. Part of the standard line is to try to get your hands on Brandon in the red, of course. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, uh, the classic Guardian Chimera play. But lately, they've also been adding fusion duplication as well, trying to duplicate the effect of their branded fusion on the opponent's turn. Yes. Mirror Jade. Mirror Jade. All right. Mirror Jade is problems. Then sends Despi and Lulu Willith Ooh. To send a Luber. Lulu Willith. Lulu effect. Uh? What happened? <laughs> you can't do that. <laughs> I didn't know somebody could do that. <laughs> you can't do that. <laughs> yeah, and he looked at her. He was like, bruh, what? He started reading immediately like, wow, who said that? Well, well, now they're in darkness. They're locked in a state of confusion. Yeah. Ooh, they gave him a minor penalty. They said if he does it again, they'll seal his fate. Okay, understood. There's a procedural error right here that is now being corrected. Uh oh. Okay. So I, I have to go back. The judge was like, "What is this amateur hour?" All right, let's see. And making him do the whole play over again. All right. And we're going back to the point where the Alibur is back on the field. All right. Do it again. I wonder how many other games he sent Lulu Walila and like mm -hmm. nobody did anything. I wonder how many times that happened. Like he did it and like nobody said anything because they just didn't know. That's why you got to read cards. Because even at this level, you know, it took somebody going, you can't do that. <laughs> Which is. <laughs> That guy. <laughs> you can't do that. That's pretty funny. That might have been the current strategy of trying to go for. Mm. So he ended on a, um, an OK board. He got uh, Brandon Rhea and Mirror J in a face now. So it's decent. Hmm. Normal summon out pearly effect. Okay. Normal summon pearly effect. We're going to chain the branded All right. red. Branded red is chain link two. He did not respond to that. So is normal summon pearly the standard opening play? Someone has to let me know in the comment section if, if that's just how pearly opens. Okay. Okay. All right. One, two, three. Wow. Man. So I know like the deck is supposed to be like pearly. It's like it's supposed to be like the pearly monster is like a pet or something. So I guess his pets are in a library since he's got all those books in his deck. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> he's he's chaining. Oh, tragedy. At Libidum is uh, targeted as a Luber. 
What are you Something doing, like bro? Caliber. All right, summon. And loss. Yeah, the branded loss player is isn't making it easy for his opponent to keep track of things because he's not doing a good job of explaining what's going on. He's just kind of doing stuff on autopilot. And I guess if you're playing against opponents who don't know or don't care what you're doing, then I guess that works, but not at this point and not at a feature match. You got people screaming at you. You got the, your opponent. You got the judges. So it's like a lot of scrutiny on the match. So I don't know. It's, uh, it's interesting. Well, I guess I know what Cardi's going to get. Happy memory added to hand. Let him cook now. We better let him do it, dude. You better let him do it, man. He's cooking over there with those pearly beasts. <laughs> All right. Pearly field spell does something. He paid 500 for something. He lost 500 life points or something. I don't think the life points that they have on the counter is representative to what the life points of the actual game is. Yeah. Or, or you know. But we'll see. Okay, so you negate my record here. Alright, pearly happy. Time to get happy. Choosing to discard a card or not. He's gonna discard. I'm gonna protect my. And we're gonna protect the card. My, friend. my friend okay. now cannot so that, be that destroyed oh, by card effects. Right. Yeah. Okay. So he's got him under the tax he's dragon. Able to uh, t basically uh, choose any card on the field. Any card. And we're gonna do something up for Lily. So yeah, they're, they're keeping the life. They're keeping the life points. Uh, I guess as best they can on the on the screen, but yeah, he's losing life points at a rapid pace here. But obviously, you know, he's not dead. So let's see. Be very careful with the he's got to make he's got to make sure he can play through this field, and maybe even and maybe even win the game in this turn, or create a board state that's gonna win the game for him on the next turn. So let's see what these pearlies can do. Okay. Happiness. Metal time. Okay, smack the Alibur. Okay. Damage step effect of happiness. Ooh. And I'm gonna search for a pearly card, and I take six for that card. And uh, we're gonna be taking out the six hundred for the activation. Twenty-one. The twenty-one. Yeah, and you get the search. Look at the tax man. Look at the tax man. You activated two effects, right? You activated two effects, right? You activated two effects, right? <laughs> Look at the tax man. <laughs> Look at the tax man. He's like, I want my life poets. <laughs> He's not playing. He's not playing. He's like, two effects, right? <laughs> the tax man is not playing. They got to, like, okay, I guess they got to figure out, like, if this is two effect or one effect. So, I guess figuring it out right now. The tax man's not playing. The tax man wants his life points. You better not play with the tax man. <laughs> he's trying to let, Kamal's trying to let y'all know. He knows exactly what he's doing. He said, let me cook, man. That, that's, Jeez. That's the How many times do you have to pay life? That this is just the tax time. man wants his money. Look at him sitting back. <laughs> you owe me taxes. Right. So you already cut his attack. Still battle. Yep. He can attack all monsters. Uh, it gets the additional attack because the happy. Like the yep. happiness and the cash of the pride. All right. So that's that's what's busted about the pearlies. They got multiple attacks, and with every like attached card that they have, it does something different, and it can also like attach the opponent's cards by doing other things too. So it's kind of crazy. 
do so not take have any to pay the okay. tax here. So, uh, this, go, this is at twelve fifty. So I take how much? Seven fifty. Seven fifty. I think about seven fifty here. And that mirror J already activated its effect, so that mirror J doesn't really have anything to do. For the search, there will be no yes. and this payment. Is not now, there's no tricky thing okay. going on here either, because this is at the end of the damage Anytime step, which means the monster's already in the graveyard anyway. Mm -hmm. so okay. All right. Yeah, at the end of the damage step. Okay. At happy. Happy. Other happy. We're very happy here. So that's kind of cool. Like the pearly monsters thing is like they can, like get multiple attacks off in the battle phase. And I think they just have a good ability to clear boards. I'm not 100% on all their combos, but I know that they can like eat up monsters and blow monsters up. So, which is interesting. You can get rid of it. Okay. Oh, he's bouncing the set back row? Hmm. Along with that, you might be discarding. I will discard. Yeah, I will be discarding. I will be discarding this pearly. Off of Pooh's effect. Happy's effect. All right. This is the second happy. Happy does change its own effect to attach that. Oh, another pearly monster. Another attack on a monster for this battle phase. I wonder how many pearly games has the the branded player played against. Yes. We are going into Ash. Phase two. No, this is, this is still that That's one. an expensive Ash Blossom he has. Yeah. Um, the uh, the Pearly. So yeah, 15 now. The, the attach effect. No, the excavate three. Are there trigger effects? Oh, it's on one, summon. It's, it's on summon. On summon. Yeah, it's hmm. first normal or special summon. I'm going to activate delicious. Oh, delicious, delicious memory. I'm going to use the effect of happiness to attach. Happiness is happening. Tasty. Really bad. Monster is getting really big. I will be making your mirror J can't die by battle. No need. Mirror J cannot be destroyed by battle. Next turn. No discard. Three, six, nine. Three, six, nine, twelve. I'm at thirty-two to your fifteen. Okay. Attack. We're at seventeen. Yeah. So take that damage. Can't die by battle. It's just thinking about lunch. <laughs> it was like, man. <laughs> doesn't even know it's been defeated in battle. Like I remember, I had some delicious yeah, memories. Defense from the delicious memory being what, what attached. Was a, it was a how much yeah, attack? Seven thousand fifty. You take seventeen. Yeah. So this is a thirty-two okay. hundred attack half. Yeah. So life points are basically straight yeah, now. Yeah, I'll split it again. So that's seven. <laughs> the event goes off again. Man, That's crazy. Per turn, having That's attacks. crazy. This is really good for Kamal. That's crazy. Those pearlies are really putting in work. I didn't know that you can. I didn't know that there was a deck that was so resource, like building in the battle phase i like that i like battle phase stuff but that's why i like gladiator beast uh so much at first and of course as time went by but i like this pearly stuff because doing stuff in battle is pretty cool i have to attack attack search attach half attack search pretty cool Uh, mm -hmm. Still a battle phase, pretty memory. All right. Still a battle phase, pretty memory. Oh, 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 yeah. uh, the effect. Oh, the third. third. Okay. Mm -hmm. third. The tax third. man right. still right. trying to uh, trying to get <laughs> taxes, <laughs> and the tax dragon is dead. Give it up, Mr. Tax Man. Give it up. That pretty memory attached. That's gonna Taxation without yeah, representation. Get that and, uh, out of here. How many effects was that? No, you don't need to know. You don't need to go. know. Jade, Yoink. Yoink. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he took it. <laughs> ah, yes. <laughs> pearly power. It's pearly noir. Now it's about to get disgusting. <laughs> Super equip. Super equip. Super equip. Wow, he's like tapping the cards like he plays magic. That's cool. Like a beauty got a monster effect negation. We have a lot of removal. And we're attaching another material. That is a lot of material. We're running out of space here. Yikes. 
just counting up all those materials, see how many cards to send back. That pearly new R is humongous. <laughs> Please. So this makes me gain 300. Does it have every single memory attached? It does now, I think. I think so. There's a sleepy. There's a happy. There's a lot of happies under it. For each happy attack. A delicious. Yeah, I think that's every memory attached. This one's definitely not that forgetful. So he basically made Newar Maximum. So how much do we multiply in terms of stats? All right, so Newar Maximum versus the Tax Man. They're taking a lot of time, though. They're eating up a lot of time with the explanation of every single card. All right, drop, sir. Yeah, you checked your end phase triggers. There aren't any. What, draw phase? Yep. Stand by. Stand by. Stand by. Sure. Draw a card. Maul turns this thing around. He had to pay himself down pretty low. What are you going to do? And Ryan had such a good opening, too. Uh, uh, really locked in. This monster, um, this. When that has pretty as material. Monster effect, negate. Quick effect, the target one effect. Monster my opponent controls and negates that effect. Negate that effect. Okay. To the end of turn. He thorough. So good. He thorough with that explanation. You've got negation. You've got removal. You have set cards in the back. Oh, you have monsters. If you do anything. No response. No response on triple tactics thrust. Is that one card in hand, Ash? Ash for game. Ash for game. Ash for game, please. Please. Ash for game. Oh, no, I saw it. Never mind. Damn. Never mind. I saw it was a spell. Whatever it is. I didn't see it before, but I see it now. It was a spell. And not only Astro that, game would have been so clutch because they need it right now. It's only 20 minutes and it's your opponent's turn. That's not good. I guess 20 minutes and it's your opponent's turn and they don't look like they're going to scoop. They're going to eat the clock up. And the dude that plays Tax Dragon, he definitely wants to eat the clock up. Like players that play Tax Dragon or any type of card that makes your opponent lose life points or pay life points. They want to eat the clock up because if they eat the clock up, they can steal a, a set, clearly. Like, it's easy to get a dub off a set if you just deal some damage and time pass. Sorry, you lose. Beauty now has an opportunity to respond. Otherwise, with the Brandon Boss in the field, that wouldn't have happened. So, Kamal thought way ahead about this. All right, well, Beauty negate. <laughs> negate that Lubellian. What was that? Tribute for cost. Oh, that's disgusting. Pearly leap. leap on the into oh, it's a a card to let him rank up. Okay. And also attach the trap too. Oh no. Now Noir is not once returned. It is not. So that's a lot of ways to put away cards. I thought that card probably did something like that. <laughs> so he brought in. I think it's called Sanctifier Dragon. I'm not 100 percent sure what it does, but I'm sure it probably does something. To try to save his soul <laughs> against all these meow meows, you know. But honestly, I mean, like with all those attachments, I mean, Nani, he got the dragoon. Uh, I didn't see him drop that dark magician. Okay, he must have dropped dark magician when he played branded fusion. But I think, um, but I think, if I'm not mistaken. There's an effect on one of those pearly monsters that say it can't be destroyed by effects. One of those memories say that, I think. Look at everybody getting confused. Look at this time getting ate up. Like, this sucks. This sucks. Oh, no, like, oh, that's what I can't do. Oh, it's a sanctifier can't be sanctifier's light. Cars light. Goofy ah plays. Okay. All right. All right. All right. I see. He's okay. Oh, now this sucks. Now honestly, I've been through this before, but not obviously not at this level. But playing against somebody who's doing a bunch of stuff and you got to read all their cards and time is just eating away. I actually, I actually won a game. Not on purpose, <laughs> but due to this playing DED, like I'm reading cards, my opponent's reading cards, my opponent's asking specific questions that's making it hard for me to just answer because I don't know. 
and timing around is just getting ate up. Match one, real long. Match two, reading every card. Match three, time. Every single time. Camille, Camille did not want to remind him, but he, but he, he, <laughs> he asked him, but he didn't. Well, he tried to stop himself, and he picked up on it. <laughs> He's frustrated. I, I mean, I, I'll be frustrated too, because time is going on, and you got the lead, but your opponent is struggling. And in the way that he's struggling, he's struggling with a dragoon. So that's not a that's not a struggle, you know. It might be a rough beat, but that's not a struggle. So <sighs> yeah, he's wiggling. I mean, he's wiggling. He just won't scoop, and he won't die. So <laughs> this isn't a good position to be in. I just keep looking at the clock. I think I think I think it's like like most of them can't be targeted or all of them can't be targeted with like one of the memories or something like that Back down to 26 for come yeah. on. No, no, it is the but yeah that effect yeah. doesn't target it just uh, blows stuff up so yeah he didn't blow up the other one because the other one has got something on it that now, won't let it get destroyed uh oh you gonna, gonna negate it and destroy it three cards back into the hand and summon one from yep. the grave well the, my friend not going through that's been negated by Dragoon. how straight pearly street is and it's just going to get my friend pearl this doesn't get destroyed oh wh why does it get destroyed because of my happy because of one of the materials both of the happy no oh, wait yeah one of my happy no oh did he, yeah, he, I did, he did use the happy, happy. Yeah. Okay. I, I guess he realized that it's not supposed to be destroyed, but it can still be negated. So. I activated Happy. Yes. Happy says until the end of the next turn. End of the next turn. That's busted. End of the next turn effects are so annoying. Especially when you manually got to keep up with them. You know, because obviously they're not on Master Duel. They're on, on a table. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah, it, it didn't destroy it. Yeah, it has to destroy it. You're correct. Okay. Uh, what's the current stats of this? Uh, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21. We're just counting up the damage that's going to be coming through. 27 defense. Against 27 defense and attack. Okay, so it's at 40. And I believe it has multiple attacks for every okay. single 55, 58 oh, is what he said. The happy memory. I don't <laughs> think there's any way to survive a battle with that monster at this no, point. Uh, not if it gets angry. <laughs> you wouldn't like it when it's angry. 55, 58. This game is more or less over. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, like that's what I'm saying. Like, he, he's not passing turn. He's doing stuff like cutting the deck, shuffling, thinking, checking grave, checking the opponent's grave. Target. Retribution. Going to add back a card from the graveyard. It looks like we're going for a branded in red. And he's checking the materials, making sure that he's able to both Put the branded in red back in the deck without losing the protection from noir. You're gonna lose because of the tax dragon. <laughs> oh no, oh, you went to game two. Okay, oh yeah, you went to game two. Okay, back and that's it on field and graveyard. Ryan needed that branded in red, he's not gonna get it. And game number one is going to come off. You know what? Ryan opened with branded fusion. He opened with the branded lost. Did, did not get. Search it. Did not have to search it. He did not get hit by an ash blossom, but he could not secure the game. That was very surprising. 
That's one of the reasons why I think we just haven't seen a whole lot of Brandon at the top tables, right? They still yeah. have all of their stuff, but a lot of times it's just not good enough. Like, yeah. Oh, now we're going to move into game number two. Is this going to be a 2-0 finish, or are we going to go to the third game? All right, so that first game, I'm glad that he ended up scooping because that could have been a nightmare. That could have been a nightmare for Tom. But this is a nightmare scenario. It's only 12 minutes. You saw how long that first game went, and my, and my man, Cash Tira. Fusion revealing, deployment. Uh, yeah. 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 Revealing uh, grand. Yeah. Hmm. What are you planning? Okay. What is Ryan doing? All right. Cartesia. Cartesia. I love Cartesia. Cartesia. That's one of my favorite cards. That's pretty cool. Cartesia is a great card. But why is he running Trash Tira in there? We're not seeing the. The standard of branded fusion opening. We haven't seen an Alubra just yet. We're gonna grab ourselves a Bestial Serenir. Really, just because that card is good. He's just uh, like, that, I'm just Cartesia playing it. Cartesia effect. Mm hmm. With tragedy. The tragedy. Maybe doesn't need to. Okay. Maybe the breaking the board line. is more his forte. Chain link two. I worry about that. Family. Wait, he chain link yeah. two and. That. That could be a uh, well, I guess it doesn't matter. It could take away the exceeds that just come out after you activate. Clearly, he doesn't have Ash or Imperm or Effect Veiler or anything like that. So. And we put a gimmick puppet nightmare into the graveyard. We're gonna see if that one's gonna land this time. We missed it last time. This time, I think we have. A I don't know what the strat is to summon that There's gimmick puppet thing. But if he gimmick puppet, <laughs> that would be so disgusting. But if he did it at this stage, oh my god, it would be so bad. Because the time is just something to consider. I'm just disgusting. I hate, I hate time. If you've ever lost the time, you know what I mean. I hate time. Time's a scary situation. Activist Aaron here. Targeting tragedy. Vanishing tragedy. A tragedy has already gone off this turn, okay. so we're not going to be getting any additional Anything? cards. No. Uh, uh, special Lebellion. We're going to special summon Lebellion. We're reading the Serenity. Uh, Serenity is a Yeah, search okay. for the little trap thing. You have two cards in hand after this? We're going to send correct. something to the graveyard with that Serenir. So two cards in hand. Perhaps. Okay. Retribution. Get some, Serenir. not out to hand, but get back to hand. Yeah, well, Brand definitely getting, going to get there, especially with the Retribution. Hmm. I'm also good at calculating all these potential effects. These things that could come up in his own turn. Hmm. Right now, the only thing that's happening here is Fen. Anything? Are you thinking? Okay. He's thinking. He might have that chicken nugget. Cartesia, the other monster. He's thinking. He's in think phase. He's counting it up. He's counting something up. He might be counting up the cost of that nugget. Is he about to get a four piece right now? Is he about to get a four piece? No, not the four piece. <laughs> <laughs> Not the four piece. No. <laughs> Nib. <laughs> Damn. Not the four piece. Not the four piece. All right, he's in trouble. Wait. I don't think he played branded fusion. So. Anyway, yeah, he didn't play Branded Fusion, I don't think. Goofing again. Mm-hmm. Can't banish him face down. You can't, uh, 
overlay with them. I mean, yeah, you get the Cartesia back. You did oh, okay, so do the thing. Oh, was he? Oh, okay. He was activating the effect of. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Now that's funny. He can make everybody attack go to zero, and he got that gajillion attack token over there. this monster. Yes. 92 of them things. That monster could wipe out any opponent's life points with just one strike. Of course. I kind of feel like I would have waited. Like, and, and like branded fusion. But I guess, well, well, I mean, I don't know. Because I guess if he branded fusion... I think he would go into Lubellion and then Lubellion into Dragoon. No, he went to Sanctifier. Oh, so Nugget. <laughs> I mean, but you never know. You don't know what's in the opponent's hand. He played the Nugget. I got perfect information anyway. And it doesn't even matter. You know, for all I know, that's going to be the wrong play. But honestly, though, Big Nugget did break up what he was trying to do. And he served his purpose. He disrupted the entire combo. So regardless if he got the Nugget 4-piece or he got the Nugget 5-piece or he got the Nugget 6-piece, unless Dragoon was the side sauce, you know, it didn't really matter. And then Magnamut going to get a boot. So he gave him a Nugget and Magnamut. Well, boy. And he put Magnamut and he put Nibiru in attack mode. Come at him. He's like, come at me. You can't. It's the first turn. I summon these monsters in attack position. Now what? <laughs> yes. 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 Yes, you can. Yes, you can have Cartesia back to your hand. Yes, you can. Put it in your hand right now. Yes, you can. But he did fuse this turn, <laughs> which will allow him to add Cartesia back to his hand. Good. <laughs> yeah, it's added back now. He's like, forget it. <laughs> I searched for the Jerusalem. So he played two cards from hand and got one recoup back and stopped his opponent's play. Great hand play. I mean, great hand trap play is what I mean. Because look at the board. The board is nothing. Does he have what it takes to OTK? Nani, look at the time. No, it's only three minutes. Can he win in three minutes? Can't preemptively activate the sanctifier because can he win in three minutes? I'll uh, attempt to activate effect. We are Sorry attempting again. it right now. Okay, here we go. Uh oh, read phase. This is the draw phase. Read phase. Read phase. Time magic. <laughs> you know. No, <laughs> this is painful. That clock is killing me. I mean, I know they're, I know that they're aware of the clock, but I know that when you're in the midst of the match, it's not the number one thing on your mind. And what, when you notice it, you notice it. Disgusting. I don't think there is. I don't have a field, to my knowledge. Oh, oh, Ghost Bell. Speaking of Ghost Bell, this also stops it. Man, he put the hand traps. He was not playing. Puppet Nightmare Summon onto your side of the field is one of the worst feelings a player can receive. And I wonder if perhaps he can get it. This guy says, makes my attack zero. Correct. Can he win in just five minutes? <laughs> Can he win this duel in the same time it took Frieza to destroy Planet Namek? Can he win this duel in just five minutes? <laughs> he better banish quickly. Otherwise, he'll be making a painful choice. Uh, it looks like he is making a painful choice. Damn. He's having a hard time on those last two. 
You gotta pick the right two because he's got a specific board he has to defeat. And that's gonna be the token. Yeah. Yeah, that token is not a level eight or higher fusion. It is not. All those all those stat points are gonna go away that's if you fun. activate the question. Alright, man, come on. Early. <laughs> that's my friend. That's a nice selection. Yeah, it's pretty nice. Is king. Pretty much you got uh, I, I don't know all the cards, but he got like majority of all his one ofs, I think. Like cards that say like once per turn in use, and you don't know what he has in his hand, so. Getting the pretty memory. Mm-hmm. Just summon his friend. This man put the hand traps. This man put the hand traps. Jesus Christ. He is not playing with you with these hand traps, boy. Dang, it's probably that good. You can really go with like one card uh, combo. It's pretty, I guess, I guess he, maybe you can. That's why he runs so many hand traps. Plus it's the second game and he's got to win. Nibiru cannot be destroyed by battle. What, I did it. And we're going to be discarding. Summoning out Lily. Sure. Okay. Effective Lily. I think we're going to be I'm over here saying, okay, now. like I'm playing. <laughs> Lily's so powerful. <laughs> yes, I have my friend Lily. One card to the next. Okay. You can see why people do play cards like Draw and Log for mm -hmm. these mm -hmm. kinds of mm -hmm. matchups. Mm -hmm. yep, no problem. Mm -hmm. Effective, he's coming. Ranking up into Eperly Plump. Ooh, that's the monster negate. He get, was uh, able to get his monster uh, negate on board and live, so that's going to be hard for him. So now Kamal's in a position to make some moves. Target two to attach. Yep, so plump is the best at gathering more material. That is great. It's mm -hmm. getting plump. It can even take care of some of the monsters on the field by temporarily banishing them when you attach uh, one of your spell cards. Oh, <laughs> he, he sends a level one away for the relinquished anima, which can absorb yep. the token since it's pointing to it. And that takes Come on! Uh, like once again, <laughs> this man, out. this man is like super yeah. genius. Like he did summon the beer, put the token in the right spot so that he could summon the anima and eat it like he knew exactly what he was doing that was, that was great great that was great our kamal i think i said kamal that was spicy <laughs> relinquished suck <laughs> <laughs> Relinquish suck. <laughs> Crazy. We're under prosperity. We can't really draw cards, but we're just adding cards left and right, one after sure. another. The drawing will happen next turn. And Let's see what will happen next. Activate, attach. It does not. And that's a temporary vanish. Okay. Time of the round has been called, I believe. Oh no! Did they just call time before battle? Um, did he activate my friend Curly? He did. He did. Uh, That's minus five hundred life points. Yeah, I finished. I do. And yes, he did. Ah, uh, that game one taking the extra time. That definitely impacted uh, this. No, game. that's what I was saying. That's infuriating. I know he's disgusted. I know he's disgusted. I know he's mad. I know he's mad. He's got to be. He's got to be. Disgusting. And you can't say, oh, my God. They're going to make him do a tiebreaker. 
like closer, no side decking allowed. Oh my god. Oh, that's what the that's four right there. Well, game two. Is that what the play is? Oh, that's for the camera. Oh, never mind. Sorry, that was just curiosity. One and one. Going into game three, into time. No oh my and god. Whoever that gets to go is random. Random random and then there's two turns aside. And the fourth turn. He lucky, man. He lucky. He lucky he got a chance. He's about to lose. The Brandon player is about to lose. Ryan was going to lose. So single elimination. He got lucky. End of he got lucky. Phase Damn. End of match well, he got lucky on the time. But on the first round, like, like they both took up a lot of time explaining cards, reading cards, checking cards, getting ruling set. Like, they spent a lot of time doing a lot of stuff that caused this issue. That's disappointing. That sucks. That sucks, man. I gotta roll again. He got to go first again. Oh my God, he's got to go first three times in a row. Who has to fight this hard for a game? Three times in a row. Three. You gotta play three games for a feature match. Top. Uh, I forget what is this? Thirty-two. Top thirty-two. And he's got to play three games against his opponent. For his opponent, he dropped a card. Come on, Vandy Keith. Oops, I dropped my Mega Zowler. Vandy Keith. Oh, Summon Cartesia. Ooh, that's frustrating. Yeah, I'll be frustrated. I'm frustrated right now. Summit Cartesia. Cartesia effect. Here we go. Drop the Despian tragedy. Because of course you have it too. What is it? Oh, okay. Well, maybe not. I can go into a lot of different things once you get the Albaz. That's disgusting, though. That's disgusting. Yeah. On summon, we're gonna continue to fuse and yeah, damage. effect on Maybe summon. Material. Good. <laughs> no ash, no veiler. Maybe you got nugget action. Damn. I still can't get over that. Three games and your opponent gets to go first every single game. <laughs> that does not feel fair at all. <laughs> and you were legitimately winning the both games that preceded these two. I mean, I preceded this one, so I don't know. <laughs> oh my God. This feels like a robbery. This feels like a robbery. I feel like I'm watching a crime being committed right now. <laughs> it feels so gross. It feels so gross. I never thought I would be this involved into a duel or or competitive content, but this is crazy. I never thought I would be this like engaged. This is crazy. I just can't I can't believe that this happened. Like that's just such bad luck. Cuz it feels like 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 for Kamal the victory is there, but he just can't grab it. So it's like for Kamal he's got the opportunity to snatch victory from the jaws of defeat. And so does Ryan. They both legitimately have an opportunity to steal victory right now. Both of them. Because Ryan can steal it <laughs> because he's not supposed to win. <laughs> and Kamal can steal it from Ryan because Ryan technically shouldn't be getting a shot right now. <laughs> he should be he should be gone. <laughs> Oh man, this is hilarious. And Brandon's fusion. Go ahead, Brandon, summon your monster. Note everything here in defense mode, just in case he gets stopped. 
<sighs> yeah, he's got to put stuff in defense mode because, you know, those pearlies get to meow and it's over. It would be funny, you know, Kamal's like, stop defense. <laughs> <laughs> that would be funny. <laughs> Activate, stop the fence. All right. Looks like that's gonna be successful as well. This. And I mean, he's got to play three branded fusion. He's got to like he's never got ash. He's had like nothing. Just like he's hit branded fusion every turn of those th of of the three turns. Just crazy. And now he's about to drop dragoon. On top of everything else. And was that Dark Magician? Yeah. Uh, uh, this feels disgusting. Going, this feels disgusting. Fusion summon. Yeah, dark Magician was the dark monster sent to the graveyard for branded fusion. Red Eyes, Dark Dragoon. There's no Nibiru mm -hmm. now. Mm-mm. Um, There's no responses now. Now yeah, back. Uh, branded fusion. Branded fusion is back. Scammed. 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 Absolutely scammed. No way. Absolutely scammed. Absolutely scammed. I can't do my man like this. This is a scam. Like, what could those pearlies possibly do against that draconic beast? Negate, pop, nine target. Yes. We have past turn. Can Kamal cook? Does he have the ingredients? Can he cook? We have the dragoon negation. He had to know. Striking dragon. All right, let him cook. Can can Kamal cook? Think face. Effect protection. What do you got? Think face. So Kamal's first turn of two. He can't hear me though, but you know, think face. Ryan Look at him calculating. Look at him counting it up. Look at him. Okay. Well, normal summon pearly. I guess I got my answer. That's I've seen him do it three times. Normal summon pearly must be the open and play. Jeez, there's that imperm. Thanks, imperm. No, he doesn't have that on the field. What are you doing? <laughs> the judge. Does he have the monster to pay six? You can read the board, you maniac. Does he have the monster to make him pay like? Does it look like it? Did you look on the field? <laughs> oh my God. Why would you, why would you stop him? Like, why would you disrupt his, his thought process? Like, why would you do that then? Why would you distract him and ask him that question? And why would you ask him that question? He's the opponent and is playing his turn. Why are you not asking Ryan, the person who plays the tax monster? Is the tax monster on the field? Don't distract this man. Stop stop cutting him off. Let him cook. Let this man cook. No, this got me disgusted. This got me disgusted. If I was if I was Kamal, I would be disgusted. I would be a little irritated. I would feel a little tilted. I would feel a little tilted. I would feel a little tilted and I would, you know, be like, can y'all just let me cook? Like, you know, I got to play through this Dragoon. Let me cook. Come on. Ask me all these doggone questions. They had nothing to do with the board. Like, let me cook. Like Jesus. No, you said negate it. No, he, no. I did, I did. Yeah, I did. as soon as he activated, you said negate. So there's no life point change. Not the best communication there on what exactly was happening. Yeah, I did. Also, yeah. you know, I activate the card. Yeah. And he's asking, is this pain 500? No, he, I think he activated it. And I think he asked him about paying it later. And I think he said, yeah. And then he thought about it. It was like, well, no, because you negated when it started. And then he's like, you know, now it's confusion. I, it's, I, confusion on both sides definitely caused that first round to go long. And they're paying, they're paying the cost for that first round, even to this last game. But Kamal just got to go. He just got to cook, man. He's got to put all that stuff out of his head, and he's just got to cook.
that was that's the only thing he can do. Because at this point, having a life point lead, he's getting held up. This current scenario. Now we're gonna be paying. Now he's paying. Now he paid five. Now he's getting the effect. Yeah, you wasted your goon. Big waste. Big waste. And also the effect of dragoon has been used. Big waste. Nice sitting over there. Now putting this in T's monster in play gets Windbrook's effect. He did say his favorite card was dragoon, though. Funny enough. And he summoned him twice. Save me! <laughs> Save me, Dragoon! Happy has been summoned onto the field. Man. Yeah. Uh, um, what does this does this give any abilities to his XC monster? Give me additional attack. Additional attack. What, so what's this current attack attack? Three, five, one and six. six. Uh, uh, you oh, additional attack declaration. Okay. And it gives another smacky smacky attacky tacky. And it gets one more. One more smacky smacky tacky tacky. Gets in there one more time. And every time it gets in there, it gets another one attached to it. And every time it gets another one attached to it, it gets another attack. And every time it gets another attack, it cuts your attack in half. And da, 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 you know what it does. <laughs> I'll be so disgusted. Part of me would feel tilted that I have to do this at all. But that's the reason why he's up there, because he's not feeling those kind of nerves. You know, there's a difference between having your feelings and being in your feelings. And right now, Kamal is not in his feelings. He's about this duel. I'm in my feelings right now. <laughs> I'm in my feelings. I'm disgusted. Fight you. It says negate that effect. It does not activate the damage. Oh, it's, nope. So this is a, a <laughs> He gave it to the judge. He's like, take that shit. <laughs> He's like, hurry up and read it. Do you need to read this card? No, sweet Jesus. <laughs> read that one too. So this is in the damage. And he's got to give him some pearly education. Damn. So he didn't know he had to bring the instruction book, meow meow. <laughs> Come on, just let this man cook. Damn, he even put the hat down like, jeez. Like, come on. Understanding timing here. Understanding what you're able to do and not do in the damage chip is quite crucial, especially when you're playing. All right, he, let him keep going. It's so distracting to stop you from doing what you're doing to ask silly questions or clarification or any of that. Delicious. Happiness to attach. Like you said, happiness to attach. Oh yeah, I'm gonna attempt to negate it. We're gonna negate it with beauty. He said, "Oh, did you say I can have a? I have? Did you activate where I can respond? I'm gonna activate this and stop you. Nope, negate. <laughs> Wonderful. Now he's like, finally, he was waiting for him to say that so he can have nothing on his board so he can just cut." And so stop what, asking what him questions. I know that's, that's what can't he's can't probably thinking. Well, I know that's what yeah, I was thinking. <laughs> I was like, I got to get you to stop playing your stuff. All right, now let him do it. Ooh. The only monster in attack position is the Dragoon. Big weakness. Big drop. Alright. Let him cook. He's doing it. Alright, he's doing it. He's cooking. These pearlies are kind of crazy. I really do like that whole we do stuff in battle phase. That's my favorite. Oh, 
So the, the end goal here is just get all this damage in and then slap down a couple of blocks. Yeah, that's a pretty good plan. That's hard. What car is he gonna get? Happy okay. memory once again. We've attached twice with happiness the race so far. Yep. So we're gonna attach another one. And I'm at 35,000. Attack for 25. 25. It's a nice chunk. We're just gonna keep on. So, yeah, he's basically hitting him. He's basically uh, hitting him with the monster cardo. <laughs> he's like pearly cardo, pearly cardo, pearly cardo. The goon's like yeah. Again. The goon. Five hundred life points left, and then the beauty can finish it. I think, so, yeah, I think so. It's only got 500 attack points left. Yes. Man, he broke him down. He broke that Dragoon down. He's killing him through his favorite card. Gotta hurt. Gotta hurt. It's gotta hurt. He's dead it! This one's very interesting because it really is. Pearly Cardo! Pearly Cardo! No, it's more. Search! Pearly Cardo! Search! Pearly Cardo! Search! Bite after bite. Wham! Oh, so it is. Take another 1350. Oh, another 1350. He made it through all three of those treacherous games. That was well earned. And, and, and old boy played well too. Ryan played well as well, but come on, you deserve that dub. Damn. That was a good game. I feel like if it weren't for the clock running out, he would have won the second game as well. Yeah. It, it feels like a 3-0, right? Yeah, it does feel like a 3-0. Damn. First up, All right, top eight. This is for Worlds. Brendan. This is for a World in White. Wisconsin. His favorite card, a card I draw often, Side Frame Driver. Facing off against him, we have Lars from Miami, Florida. Favorite card, Blue Eyes, White Dragon. The all-important die rolls coming up. It's game number one of our top eight matches. All right, game Day. number one, top eight. Fire. This will send somebody to world really so this is a big duel for both of these uh contenders lars is playing cash tira and i believe his opponent is playing uh uh dragon link um, yeah brendan he's playing dragon link Disgusting. No. Brandon, what are you playing? Oh, Dragon Link. What do you have? What do you have for this? Nothing. Lose. Magnum. Okay. Okay. One for one. Okay. And nothing gets banished. Magnum pass. End on hand traps. <laughs> Again, no cards in the graveyard, so if there's additional copy of Dimensional Sister, this could be going on for quite some time. Uh, What's he going to do? They're getting banished. Rocket Tracer. That's a level 4 tuner, a level 6 non-tuner. Can a Synchro summon or a level 10 Synchro? It looks like it's going to be Beastial Dispatter. That makes a lot of sense. Gives you Wait. Amount of recursion. Dispatter? So use the effect huh? to special summon a banished monster. Okay, 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 okay. Dimensional It doesn't look like. It looks like he is going after that dragon, that Beastial Magnumite. It also has the effect uh, when your opponent activates a card, you can shuffle a banished card, and based upon whose banished card it was, that's pretty good. You shuffle your own card back, it'll negate the effect. And if you shuffle Is your opponent's back, it destroys it, I believe, or the other way around. One, One of those two. <laughs> Definitely want to leave your opponent as an option. 
going for the magma here, opting to not. Judges make him correct this field, making Lars correct this field. Hmm, is that collector's rare? Ooh, that's gotta be expensive. This is actually pretty, pretty good. Open with a pop in face of the thing, so so you end on a pop. That's cool. Would be useful here. At least gives him a way to have some sort of disruption through this dimension shifter. All right, that's cool. He's got uh, pop and two bodies. That's not bad, but that's you know, you know, again, that's a weekend play. Absolutely, and not, I think he's going to synchro again, or no, this is a link summon, I think. Okay, so hieratic seal <laughs> of the mm -hmm. heavenly spheres. So he's trying to set up multiple interruptions here, uh, um, being able to potentially get another copy of Magnum so he can get seal. another additional search during the end phase. Seals pass, and now Magnum is going to add. Do you think Brendan is aware? I mean, he has to be aware that this is a, the Kashtir matchup. Heavenly Spheres, not very strong against any individual Kashtir monster. Yeah, maybe just wait till you hit like an Xyz monster of some sort, but it's tough. I imagine Lars is just going to him? summon yep. any of the monsters and go straight into the battle phase. I would imagine so as well. Because now he has that Brandon Beast, but doesn't have a Beast Seal on the field. I guess he could summon one from the Seals. Yeah, money. yeah a Fenrir would be a really strong start here. I do see a copy of Kashtir Theosis in his hand. Yeah, okay. Pressure Planet Race Off, yep. That would be a pretty good card to seal. It's <laughs> <laughs> the most vulnerable one you could have. Yep. So he's going to tribute it to return the Race Off to the hand, which can only activate once per turn. Now, since the seal was tributed, going oh, after travel. Cutting that off as well. He's yeah, in trouble. Saying. That's going to be able to take off away the Branded Beast. Mm -hmm. so, oh, it's just an Arise. I think there is a copy of Kashtir of Birth in Lars's hand, so he is able to play with this. He's in trouble. I don't know a lot about Cash Tira, but I know enough just to know this. He did not get what he wanted. He didn't get the open strong. He got interrupted at every turn. I had to quickly look at a couple cards. He got interrupted at every turn. And not only getting interrupted every turn, I think he played a little too deep into his combo. And he's devastated. He has to sit there and just watch his opponent make a meal of destruction. It's about to be devastating. He might be OTK. Let's see what happens. He does get the cash. He does got the cash, Tira. So. Because there is just an empty field. He should be able to OTK. Right? right? Yeah, that shifter was pretty crippling. And then the ash on the seals. Shifter, ash, blossom, seals. It's tough. He's pretty much had an answer for every move that Brendan has made in this game. <laughs> All the critical points. He did. How heavy of an investment it was going into this. All those monsters being banished, those resources not being able to come back. All right. So right. I think that's Rise Heart. Yeah. Catch Tira Rise Heart. We're going to be adding another copy of Rise Heart and using it to yeah. special summon itself this time. And there is the Theosis targeting one of the Rise Hearts. Like he's Summon another guy. Out there on the board. Yep, summoning Ooh. The I think that card can attack in defense, defense or something like that. Oh, I forget the, the rest of it, but I think it can attack in defense one, or something. So Smacky. Oh, uh, GG. Trash. The D shifter was trash. We talked about it before the match started. The card that he's trying to avoid the most is Dimension Shifter. Unfortunately for him, Lars had that at the beginning of that game. And even though he was able to do a little bit with his hand, not as much as he would have done through without that Shifter. Because he had stuff like Chaos Base, Beast Seal Labellan, could have discarded, got another Beast Seal. Man. Unfortunately, that Shifter was all he needed to shut it down. Now that they can dive into their side decks, they might have a little... I'm sure that uh, Brendan has prepared his side deck heavily for Kashtir, because it has to be one of the hardest matchups for the Dragon Link deck. Absolutely. We talk about just how important this dice roll was alone, but it was only half the battle. You still have to play around the Dimensional Shifter. And if you think about how powerful the Dragon Link deck could be, you have access to the new cards in Duality, as well as the other cards from Monster's Revenge. But they're just so unactivatable when there's a, a rise heart on the field you really can't invest in those extra resources you couldn't make this deck as powerful as it has the potential to be and it's because just the kashtira deck exists that's very true now looking at brendan's side deck there are some interesting uh, choices in here that will come in quite in handy he has a <coughs> to go second in kashtira but looking at going first he does side deck three copies of eradicator epidemic virus 
which is kind of cool in the Rocket deck because it's pretty easy to summon a target for that in the Dragon Link strategy, but not a card I've seen often in the side deck of Dragon Link. Maybe it's been more popularized now as a way to counter the Kastira matchup. Yeah, I think it... I wonder how heavy of an investment it's going to be because which monsters are you usually using? Because it has to be a dark one, right? Rebellion is a light. Yeah, Beastial Dispatter is probably the one that you'd probably go for. Because it, it, Oh, it's, it's just 2,500 special. 2,500 like, higher. Oh, yeah. Any Bestial will do. Oh, any Bestial <laughs> works, yeah. Not just Dispatter, any of them, yeah. yeah for a moment, easy. I thought it was 3,000. <laughs> Dispatter would work too. But it's definitely something he's going to be looking to do. I mean, the, the number one goal here, don't let Lars draw Dimension Shifter again. <laughs> yeah, definitely don't want to... Well, I don't know how much control he can really have over that. <laughs> Shuffle well, Pharaoh. <laughs> One of my favorite scenes. Love Merrick. Now it looks <laughs> like they are getting shuffled up. They are side deck. The players are pretty focused. Lars looks locked in. He now knows he is one game win away from going to the World Championship in Japan this year. Brendan looking a little uncomfortable. He is feeling that pressure right now. And I see a little bit of a laugh from Lars. See, I'm, I'm the kind of player where, like, when we're siding stuff, I like to, you know, kind of put my opponent at ease, make, like, a couple jokes. Just let him, remind him that we're here to have fun at the end of the day, even though there is a lot on the line. This is probably one of the biggest matches of both these players' dueling careers. Absolutely. Playing for that World Championship, the pressure has never been higher than this moment, except for maybe the final matches of the playoffs themselves. Yeah, this is going to be epic. I mean, if I'm oh, Lars, I'm trying not to get too excited, you know, you... You, even though you're up one game, there's plenty of times where I've lost games two and three. You got to stay focused, got to stay strong, got to stay committed to your strategy. Yeah, you can't allow yourself to get too comfortable. That's when you start making mistakes. Exactly. Players really shuffling up here. The anticipation is really getting like, uh, It's getting to me. Right. <laughs> it this looks like Brennan's going to go first this time again in game number two of our top eight match here at the North American World Championship Qualifier 2020. This is real disgusting. They're both 12, 2, and 1 right now. Oh! No, not like that. That was the fastest drop I've ever seen. Not like this. Destroying Dimension Shifter games 1 and 2 in the opening hand. No. How will Brendan be able to navigate this? He was able to make some plays last time. Oh, man. And that thing, like, come on. There's already a copy of Unicorn in his hand as well. He's going to summon Damn. the flare metal, link it into Striker So Dragon. bad. So bad. Black metal into Striker Dragon, Striker Dragon. So bad. Grab Boot Sector Launch. So we saw so bad. a soft play of Hieratic Seal and Red uh, in the first turn. Do you think that is the most first field you able turn to make the field? What are we trying to make? I'm trying to summon turn a monster one use Eradicator tilt. on. I'm, I'm hoping he opened up with that Eradicator Epidemic Virus. I don't see any traps in his hand, though. I see an Ash Blossom, which might come to help. There is a copy of Tracer, at least, which is yeah. enough to uh, put up that monster. Actually, is there a trap card in I can't tell. There is a copy of uh, Dragon Ravine. I Maybe he can draw. Maybe he can draw into it. Well, there's only two. And so, well, oh, no, it gives Eradicator it would win. win. It's Eradicator. He's going to have a shot here. I assume the other trap cards went out, went away, but oh no, it's hmm. There is a levy near as well, but that one card, oh, it, it might be an impermanence. Oh no, but at least he lost something. He's going to probably looks like going to a heretic seal here again. That might be just the safest play. Yeah, just try to. <laughs> it does not feel good. The most impactful one. Hope that Lars. One face down. Like, just to be able to go into it. Because I mean, if you're Scream! lucky enough, you don't have to be lucky enough to draw the actual Kashira monsters. There's really are not that many of them. Like game one. <laughs> Harpy's yeah. Feather Duster. Nice moments away. Harpy's Feather Duster. <laughs> oh my God, Lars! <laughs> Lars looks like he like yeah, I got this. <laughs> Lars knows. I think Lars has it, but he's like, you know, he's, he's playing it out. I think Lars knows he's got game. That card's busted. It's like Super Cyber Dragon, and it's engine card, and it's like super expensive. It's like a great card. If Lars does not take the game this turn, Bert is just going to be applying pressure every single turn. I imagine a Battlefield okay. Battle Pop to return. Unicorn, you're not going to do this in the main phase. He's just going to summon it again and continue to play as it was. No Ash this time. We get to see the Hieratic Seal and go for a monster. Magnum is there. Maybe. Going to add okay. some follow up here. Maybe but Magnum Moots. 
Point yeah, says zero. Eradicator. 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 Oh, holds it. Doesn't use it yet. Sorry, I saw. For those of you at home, you didn't know I just shook him like crazy. I'm hurt on the floor. <laughs> you think it was good? Get up, Asala. What are you doing? <laughs> Oh man, please. I don't think he can activate. I'm going to look that up. But I don't think he can play that Eradicator. If he has it. But he doesn't want to allow him to normal summon the unicorn now that he knows it's in his hand. Yeah, he's going to have to just snap. He has to do it now. I think he has to activate it. Let me see. It says a target a monster with 2,500 attack or more, a dark monster with 2,500 attack or more, and Magnamut's attack is zero because it was summoned by spheres. So he can't play. He can't play Eradicate an Epidemic Virus. It's gonna be tough. There are at least two spells in the hand there. Yeah, one's enemy controller that he can chain to the Eradicator now. Well, you can't chain to Eradicator. The monster's not gonna be on the field. Oh, because it tributes off the one monster you could have. Yeah, enemy controller. That's right. He's cut. So he's gonna special summon to Damn, right? this man is cut. This yeah, man is cut. No! <laughs> Lars got him. He's done that a few times throughout this tournament. Damn. Vanishing another copy of Kashira Birth in case we find it the Osis later. Being able to have that follow up potential, being able to add a birth from the Banish is going to be really important here. And now we're activating the Theosis. Brendan just waiting yeah. for essentially the end of the game at this point to activate the Eradicator. Maybe next game? Yeah. Let me see. Her seals. Oh, I mean, in this way he'll get rid of both first. Now. Yep. You special summon a dragon monster from your hand or deck. Make its attack and defense zero. I mean, he is. I imagine this is the same board from last turn. So he's just going to try to make. I think he just said inner battle phase. He did. Interesting. Why would Havana still be used in the main phase here? Oh, yeah, Fenrir is going to be able to attack. He's going to be using its effect on the match. Yeah. You're not activating. Oh, it has zero attack. Oh, Summon that's right. Seals. That is right. I don't know. We missed that. Yeah, so it's off seals. <laughs> so yeah, can't even use the card face down. Brandon's not crazy. We're crazy. <laughs> You just see the Magnum and you're like, oh, yeah. We Brendan looks so defeated, man. I'm just trying to look at any, uh, any Crush his soul. Brandon, he just, just, he just lost this no. game <laughs> to <laughs> just looking, shenanigans. Looking not so great here for him. He just, Identical he just lost this game to a fucking exactly RNG. Yeah, that's that's it. trash. Moving on into the top I mean, one. good game for Lars, you know, <laughs> not saying Lars did anything he wasn't supposed to do. You know, he did what he was supposed to do. He's playing cashier. Damn. Japan, as you said, Asala, he's going to represent North America at the World Championship. To lose like Japan. that at this stage, yeah, it's got to like, hurt. There's no way he's not going to activate his Eradicator here, but now it makes complete sense because it's off the seals. It makes us at 0-0. Zero, zero. Oh, just an unfortunate hand. Is there any way? If he had Eradicator, instead of going into the seals, maybe gone into like a synchro play or something, somehow get a monster on the field that he would be able to eradicate her. Yeah, he would just have to have used the Rocket Tracer effect on the boot. Representing North America at the World Championship in Tokyo, it's Jeremy from Jacksonville, Florida. His favorite card is Sprite Blue. And his opponent, we have Enzo from Elizabeth, New Jersey. Favorite card, Rescue Cat. All right, game one, it's time to duel. All right, 55 minutes on the clock here because it's the semifinals. Oh, Enzo. Semifinals. Semifinals. And right. Enzo and Jeremy. I believe they're both playing Cash Tira. So we're not going to see Dimensional uh, uh, D Fissure doing much on these guys, basically. With cards like Enemy Controller, Book of Mood, ways to break apart uh, the Cash Tira board. Yeah, and he's chosen to go second here. I mean, okay. Assuming that we have lots of those cards in play. Yeah. Now, there are certain cards that are not as useful, such as Dimensional Shifter. Normal amount rise up. D Shifter is uh, not going to be start. working here. Uh, not exactly the strongest opening. Typically, you want to open with something like a Fenrir or a Unicorn. This telegraphs quite a bit about Jeremy's hand. Yeah, so 
for Adventure Shifters actually put in a ton of work. Uh, you might have watched the last feature match. Oh, yes, <laughs> yes. I, I, that, that, that was the MVP, for sure. There's no doubt about it. I wouldn't be shocked. He's just talking about these shifters. The Don't invoke his name in this match. Over the last couple of rounds, it got them out. It's very powerful. <laughs> Putting someone under Macrocosmos, we're going to activate these the effect of so birth. Busted. Birth special summons back the unicorn, so we have to cycle away to get to the unicorn. He's we're got D shifter in his hand. And a rise heart, but that's He's got one D shifter in his hand. Use the Shangri here right here. We have the Theosis added to hand. Yep, guys, here. Theosis target unicorn. We get to summon something that's not the win attribute. Or got so disgusted. Got <laughs> Don't slap, slap my whole camera set up out. Right now. Cashier Fenrir being able to further add an additional monster. I'm just I'm so surprised right. that it took this long. Yeah, this Cashier deck is just crazy. I thought people would be playing it immediately as soon as it came out in Darkwing Blast. In my region, that was the case. Did you have that? I definitely did have that. We always compared uh, Cashier Fenrir to Pankratops. Yep. It's a similar type of card, but very different gameplay involved with both. One feels more like a gadget. Yeah. Well, we do have three level seven monsters. We're locked into Xyz monsters only, but that's fine. The whole deck is more or less made up of Xyz monsters in the extra deck. I think he's gonna summon the Shangri La La La, a Shangri La Ila, or whatever. He's gonna summon a Shangri something. One of those uh, Xyz Kashtira cards that let you pop a uh, a zone. Well, if he locked off five zones, that'd be disgusting. But I don't think people do that uh, too often. Or, or maybe they don't do that as often anymore. Fear in the Biru. We're passing turn. No Arise Heart. We're not going to go into a Rise Heart. <laughs> Having more monsters is better. Not only that, leaving the Unicorn. Yeah, be that's, what, that's, that's the key. What's he going to do? He's got a handful of cards. So, I mean, that's kind of dangerous. But he's got four cards in his hand. <laughs> and five on the field. That's disgusting. Like, that whole turn cost him one card. No, no, he's not. He doesn't even have five. He has six cards on the field. This deck is crazy. Cash share is insane. He's got six cards on the field and one card, four cards in hand. After doing all that, and, and those cards on the field are live, I think. Try to just special summon unicorn and go for the attack. That like they all have like some sort of like of floating or lingering or some sort of effect that, that helps them down. or whatever. Just not get anywhere. Yep. We're gonna special summon out the unicorn. Yep. Is that a book of moon? We're gonna get the effect off, so it might not be a book. Yeah, of moon. cash on cash. I'm a little lost on this one. I don't really know. 100 percent on all these cards. But this is the top deck, <laughs> so you better learn them. Let me see. Now, because it's the unicorn, let's say Jeremy does use the unicorn and pull a card out of Enzo's deck, then Enzo can swing right back to his unicorn effect to pull something out of Jeremy's extra deck. But do you actually go for? The Arise Heart, or do you go for something more valuable like yep. a Zeus? That depends on how many Zeus are in each player's extra deck. You do get to look. We're gonna get through the normal summon what of the doing? I feel like Jeremy has it's been starting to get disgusting. in this situation before. He's keeping very calm and not just jumping into activating all of his effects. Yeah, so he's waiting for the normal summon here to use the focus. Button. Yeah. Was Book of Moon, Sheer Fenner, look face down. Okay. That's not a monster effect, so no one's really going to be starting any sort of monster effect chaining here. Now, there's not enough cards to use the birth effect because of the spell card either. Cast Sheer Birth, one of the most powerful cards in the deck, activating the card called Pot of Prosperity. Hmm. Enzo going to reach how many cards? We're going to go for the full six. Six. Six cards. Hmm. He knew exactly which six he needed. He didn't have to think on that much. Can excavate now. One. Fenrir. Ooh. A lance. That could have been a bit more useful earlier. Triple tactics. Okay. Look at me. Also, there's some decent picks. Jeremy was very mm. careful. None of the monster effects were activated and. If you get a tactics, it's going to telegraph that. I'm not going to activate anything. Battle. Entering battle phase. Hmm. We're going to 
attack into the Fenrir. Fenrir is destroyed. So gone for now. Okay. Both players have Burf. Okay. Main phase two, we're going to activate the effect of yep. Rise Heart. Special summon. Okay. What if he already had like a tactics or something like that in his hand? Neither player wants to activate their unicorn in this position because if one goes off, the other one goes off as well. You know, they'll trade blow for blow right here. Mutually assured banishment. I mean, when you're at the top four, you got to be a bit more conservative on your resources. But it depends on who's more comfortable playing without certain cards in their extra deck. This is so tense. Now, Burf has been a special summon back. A All right. Spanish. So, special summon back. Mm. Now, what would be the priority I mean, here? We have a unicorn that could add additional, additional spell cards. We have a Burf also there. Jeremy's, like, so not even really shuffling really the cards in his a hand. Lot more monsters being summoned right back onto the field. So like Jeremy's like unfazed. Go into the extra deck. Perform the exceed summon. Effect. You just leave everything up. This almost looks like classic Yu-Gi-Oh, where we just have big monsters and we're just gonna swing at each other. But really, there's so many effects just being held back. Hmm. So Fender's gonna pick up Scareclaw Capture. Hmm. Great follow up. Both players are being very, very careful. I think Enzo is slowly pulling. To make some rank seven point. guy. We're gonna see a big guy. Big guy? Or I think we might see a big guy take. Well, I mean, yeah, take a cash so, tier card. That would really be pretty busted. We annihilation. We can take out both the unicorn and the bird. Uh, annihilation. Okay. And goes for dark arm. All right, we are pops. taking them out one at a time. Okay, he gets two pops and then you can't battle. On resolution, it's good. No uniform. He's letting everything slowly get destroyed. You let it go. Both the materials, the dark arm, more or less. They both had that now. check on each other. Now, the effect of that dark arm is. So they both had the banishment check on each other. So he let it all go through. So let's see what Jeremy can do. So there's every chance that Jeremy just has another. So the only back and forth we really had yeah, at these featured chance. matches so far. <laughs> Actually, we had back and forth on oh, everyone. I think that back. We had back. We had a lot of back and forth. And now Jeremy, the last yeah, one just didn't have any back and yeah, forth, <laughs> which was disgusting. Yeah. Well, gonna, uh, <laughs> I'm over here invoking the card that stand. shall not be named. <laughs> The last one definitely had some back. It didn't have any back and forth. The last one still got me tilted. Damn. I hope, I hope Brendan. I hope Brendan recovered after that one. I would be salty if I was in his position. That was that was a, that feels like a stolen game. And a lot of people get caught off guard. It's all of the cash here monsters that gain the ability. But see, that's the, that's what's funny because the stalemate that they had at at their time. Um, and we got a book of moon ooh. on a theosis. Ooh. We okay. lost the theosis and the monster was put face down. That's gonna reset the level of the rise art too. It does. Now it's not stuck face down. It can just flip it right back up. Yeah, we stopped the effect though. I think. It's the effect, I believe. You're gonna go for a scareclaw cash tira. Okay. And no one really wants to use the uh, the secondary effect of birds, I don't think. Okay. No, that's gonna be too beneficial for the opponent. Oh, I'm gonna take away your cash tier at theosis. Get a free card. Banish. Banish. We've got a birth. That's a birth. 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 This time he is gonna use it. Take away the theosis. Banish three. Down. That's pretty so good. It won't be able to use it. That is good. That is right. It does go face down. We're not going to get anything here. The bird is going to pull Fenner back. Fenner yep. back activates. Of course, these are not runic cards. These are cash tier cards. Banishing face down really disables the access to those cards. So busted. The only way to access it is if your card 
just targets a banished. Now, from my understanding, the cash tier of cards or the cash tier of monsters are supposed to represent like some sort of like invading colonizing force. And like from how they play, banishing stuff face down, crazy disruptions, crazy advantage, building up like a ridiculous game state after they've invaded the field. Yeah, I can see that. Definitely see that. Harnessing the powers of the cosmos through exceed summoning. Yeah, I can see that. Pretty much on brand for them. But right now, these two guys are fighting each other. These two uh, ancient warring tribes are fighting each other. So basically, they're fighting each other on a planet that they are conquering. Let's say they're conquering the Scareclaw planet. No, actually, they're, they're conquering the YCS planet. And now they have to fight each other. <laughs> They're, they're conquering North Carolina right now, and they had to stop to fight each other because they didn't agree on policies and resources. So, yeah. I have a second copy. Yeah, buddy. All right. He's like, well, you've already used your cash Terra. Shangri-Ra. Sh Shangri a little bit of zone locking, perhaps. Ooh. We're going to banish for cost the Cash Tira Big Bang. You already did the top three. Right? Yeah. Uh, banish top three base down. Chain one, two. I'll lock this. Uh -huh. mm. All right. So that's when you get locked, though. You get the Big Bang effect being banished. Well, now that the so space is locked, you can't use it. The effect of Shangri Ra has been activated. So the Rise Heart can come with one mm -hmm. or two. Mm -hmm. And we're going directly era. using the Shangri Era. That loads it with more material. That's the big that's one. Good. Yikes. The here is that you need more attackers. You need enough attackers to do the thing. We'll have to be very careful here not to accidentally act. Put a card into the graveyard and that, activating the rise heart. Oh, it is? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah can't use Mathiosis. All right. It's like it's hard to get over there and just finish the game. He's got all those bodies. Yeah, the zone lock should be gone. Yeah, the zone lock. Yeah, that's not there. Is not on the field anymore. If we can somehow get ourselves into Big Eye and take the Fenrir, that's going to change the game in a massive swing. There's plenty of level seven. Well, there's two level sevens left because of the Arise Heart effect. Yep. And Big Eye. The uh, big eye is going to detach, and that's going to get banished, and that's going to be, that's going to take the fender. Okay. I'll take the fender. Yeah, we're going to take the fender. You the ain't. Is the best choice. Therefore, the fender cannot trigger on Enzo's side, and then a rise heart is going to activate, taking one of the banished cards as material. Busted. And we're going to put back a Theosis, and you can take a face down one as well. He took his CR Fenrir, or ultimate Fenrir. It's very expensive. Oh, there we go. Uh, now that big guy cannot attack. The big guy use its effect. Um, inner battle. Take out your big man. Got a little battle effect action. Um, Annihilation. It's gonna be banished face down. Yep. Activate a rise heart. I'm gonna banish the face down card. Face down. And then a rise heart. Gross. And banishing face down is so powerful. It just he takes the resource away completely. Yeah, That's exactly what an invading force would do. They would come in, they take your resources, and they leave you <laughs> stranded. <laughs> they leave you stranded with no hope so that you'd have to comply or be destroyed. And that's exactly what he's doing with the Cash Terra deck. Now we're still 
at basically the attack declaration of uh, Patrick Henry. So we're past the point where you can mirror force it. Uh, we've now had a replay since both monsters. Past the point where you can mirror force it. I don't see any face downs. What are you talking about? It's crazy. He's deciding uh, whether or not to continue to attack with. Well, yeah, I guess he's just saying that <laughs> if you had something like that. You couldn't do it, but yeah, he's he's defeating him right now. Oh, he's got two shifters in his hand. Yeah, big bang. He's got two shifters in hand. No, he didn't activate big bang. He sent big bang. You can't detach to get the additional damage. Oh no. Oh yeah, he did play it. No, no, he did. I I, I thought he didn't use it. I thought he sent it with an effect, but. Maybe I wasn't paying attention or something. Big Bang was banished through Rise Heart. Yeah. Oh, Big Bang yeah, it was, wasn't it? Yes, it oh, was. Yeah. The Theosis is going to add the Big Bang. I still added back Big Bang from Theosis. That's, you still added it back? Yeah. 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 Okay, and now we're going to see a Zeus be put on board because the next Seas monster did perform <laughs> battle. Mm. Now, yeah. Enzo Zeus. Three thousand. And and Enzo, this game is going on pretty long. It's a lot. It's just not game. Uh-oh. Uh, see what he does. Very scary. Well, Actually, it's Zeus. more than that because it, well, no, he doesn't have the planet. That's not the planet. There, there's no planet. That's his graveyard. That's cast your birth in the graveyard. His opponent has the planet. <laughs> hmm. Very, very sensitive situation right here. One wrong move, and that's just double end for Enzo. But if Jeremy this is like intense. Effects, it could mean his whole board is going to fall apart. But with the Zeus available, are we going to be able to force the Zeus so that Jeremy just ends up winning? I mean, yeah, I was about to say, it doesn't look like he can win. Jeremy takes the game one. Yeah. And I hear Oh, wow. Yeah, he said he had double shifter. Yeah. It is not good. Yep. yep. So that's the danger of main deck and dimension shifter is that if you run into the other the shifter right, curse is not useful dimension shifter on. blessed but it's uh the, the last match and else. curse this and match the temptation is just putting your main deck anyways and take your chance two shifters did here. that it's gonna be tough for our North the magic North negative North numbers too five of them played cash yep. uh, this weekend and the, uh, so dimension out, shifter cool. blessed yeah, the previous the match time. and cursed this one two dimension now shifters in the, in the first hand and two and rounds uh, where dimension Enzo shifter was played once again. so yeah, is that the end of dimension times, shifter <laughs> in these cash <laughs> duels yeah it better be damn dimension shifter that trash out of here He's drawn the birth again. Oh. So Fenrir gets Unicorn, but he already has birth, so he's able to normal summon that without tribute, thanks to Kashtir of Birth. And now okay. Unicorn's going to go ahead and get Kashtir of Theosis. Theosis and they're playing fast. There's 30 yeah, minutes on the clock, so it should just be a one. nice, clean win or loss. And apparently he already oh, Unless Enzo right wins this. What is the... Well, then at this point... Then I have to play again. I think you could probably just set it up so that the... Um, a rise heart can it immediately Block just one. allow for the banish Banished of three. Uh, Theosis. Maybe you can fetch back uh, a piece of resource Yikes. right away once you uh, lock down the field into banishing. So we're going rise heart effect, uh, banish big bang, one, take three two, cards one, off of Enzo's deck face down, <laughs> and make rise heart level hmm. seven. Yep. Shangri Era goes ahead and blocks off that zone over there. There could be some crucial cards off the top that we can't see that could have been very, very useful. Now we're going to Big Bang. We're going to detach the okay. hand. And then we're going to special summon it onto So, yeah, basically he's going to try to summon out the two or three of those guys and drop some big XEs guys <laughs> and pass. We're going to go plan it now. <laughs> two or three of those um, level seven cash Eight monsters. Well, that's a lot of playing all Cause the cause hits. I think because you get yeah, a banish with the cash monster. You get, I don't know what the Scareclaw one does, but, you, but I know it can attack through defense. You get the banish, you get the um, Shangri uh, super guy who also does a banish. It's a face down banish though, so it's a good banish, quality banish. <laughs> and they are not shy on resources at all. 
Utopic Draco future, even. Channeling 1, mm. Icehard, Channeling 2, Diosis. Alright. Right, Icehard. Yeah, Diosis. Diosis. Picks back up the Big Bang. Mm. Big Bang, with it in the back, you do feel a lot safer as your opponent's trying right. to develop the board. You're going to force him to banish down back, back down to one water. Oh, is that oh. the Tax Dragon? Oh, that's the Tax Dragon. Red Eyes Flare Metal. 500 damage every time Enzo uses a card. Mm. See, the hands are All right. That's right. Get ready. It's game number one here of the finals of the North American World Championship. All right. By card while it has the material, then... I think that's not too big of a problem for this. Oh, but it's not staying around. It's being treated for eradicator epidemic virus. Oh! <laughs> oh! No way! Oh, no spells. way! No! No, 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 no. Oh, my God. <laughs> Look at Jeremy laughing. <laughs> That's Jerry know that shit's funny. But he wow. don't wanna laugh though. He don't wanna well, laugh though. <laughs> Look at this one! Jeremy, and put in the Jerry is like mm, mm, mm. <laughs> All right. That's right. Get ready. It's game number one here of the finals of the North American World Championship. All right, this is it. Final duel! Kashira versus Kashira. Lars versus Jeremy. I wonder who's considered the villain here in this scenario. Who's the hero? I don't know. They're both playing catch. Oh my god. Ooh, pressure plan. Ash. Amazing gameplay. Tactics. I think he has to draw. I don't see any monsters in there. Looks like he is going to draw two cards. Two. All right. Spicy. That is, looks like a lot of spell cards. I see an infinite permanence. I see an enemy controller. I think I see another Man. enemy controller. A Kastira Theosis. Does he have that Kastira monster? He needs to get the ball rolling. I think Jeez, those are look at that hand. spells and an impermanence. <laughs> looks like he doesn't have Ooh. any Kastira cards. That Ash Blossom and Joy String going to be enough to stop Lars in wow. his tracks oh despite drawing the two triple tactics. Yeah, wow, oh my goodness. Triple tactics talent. Jeremy, you're making that mm. into play. Is that he terrible? What's going on? Kastira matchup. All right. That strategy Effect, is so Emperor. reliant on finding its monsters, but there's not that many actual okay. monsters. You want to cut it off in any way possible if they don't immediately. All right, so they, they, that's a, this spells. is a pretty decent, yeah, like, with here. Put, like push and pull start. Spell, but and Jeremy has Jeremy that has um, right tactics in his hand, too. Going to banish a Kashira card from the deck to banish the top three cards of Lars' deck face down. Two, three, what you get? If Jeremy has a copy of Birth in his hand, this could really seal the deal for their Birth. There is okay. Kastira Birth. Doesn't, be doesn't be I was going to say the same thing. Doesn't activate the infinite permanent zone. He's going to be able to special summon that banished Kastira Finrear. Now all he has to do is potentially just get a copy of Scarefly Kastira. And this could Lars is in the trouble. Lars has been able to end all those matches before. Just attacking for game. That shows why power, yeah. the deck of Kastira is so powerful. Going second. Taking a moment to start. This is the second copy of infinite permanence. I believe he's using that on the Finrear. Now... Even though those are powerful interruptions, those mm. monsters are still there. There's still so much pressure. Lars is down two cards, not being able to remove those bodies. Kastira Birth is up there. Jeremy is holding all the cards right now. What do you think about using the infinite permanence on the Kastira? Yeah, he's in Rise trouble. Lars is in big trouble. Do you think trouble. the reason why he held it off and used it for the Finrear? Maybe just hoping that his opponent didn't have something like Birth? Man, what a, yeah, way, what a way to, to get clapped right at the final duel on a break. <laughs> There's really a low chance of winning in the first place. I mean, well, he didn't he brick. He got ashed. Keep as many resources. <laughs> and he got, um, uh, and, and, and drew into two area. spell cards. So he didn't brick. He just paid for his misdeeds. <laughs> Basically. Yeah, no brick. He just paid for his misdeeds with the last uh, duel with his double uh, uh, dimensional shifter. So he just paying for his misdeeds right now. So I guess that answers the question. That makes Jeremy the hero. Because now Jeremy Jamie didn't win Jamie with Jamie two Jamie dimensional. Jamie <laughs> I mean, dimensional, uh, uh, dimension. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so I guess that makes Jeremy the hero. <laughs> 
three. Disgusting. But Jeremy, in the same way, he hit hit somebody with I don't see why not. Uh, deck devastation. devastation. So. What is he looking for? <laughs> Just probably any of those powerful quick play spell cards. Potentially a book of moon. Maybe a forbidden lance. Yeah, something to disrupt Lars if he happens to draw something to make a comeback. I'm sorry, this happened. There's a pressure climate. Ooh, he's got dark hole. Main deck dark hole is pretty cool. Yeah, dark hole main deck There's is pretty cool. Here. Maybe just getting more resources with the pressure climate. I couldn't imagine that. Set your whole board up, and the only negate you don't have is a spell negate. I imagine. And your opponent normally. Or the pressure planet. Runs the dark hole in their deck. They open up with the one spell dark hole. Leaving up the fender in the unicorn. Disgust. It does go for the pressure planet race off. But it would make sense that the Kashtira deck does play Dark Hole. They are alien invaders. So, yeah, they would have access to a Dark Hole. I wonder if Vanny is going to commit it now or just keep it to make a choice based on what happens on the following turn. He's going to use it now immediately. Pressure Planet Race off. Let's see what he decides to add. Maybe a copy of Kashtira Fenrir. Looks like he's thinking about Scare Claw Kashtira. Maybe, um... I mean, I don't know. It looks like this is over. Knowing that Lars doesn't have any actual resources, there's no Kashira monsters in his hand. You would have to top deck one. Is it a unicorn he's adding? It looks like it. I can see between the shuffles. Yep, that is a Kashira unicorn. Being able to know some of that. Maybe it looks like this duel is done. Kashira you know what I'm saying? I think he still has his normal summon this turn. Even. Uh, yeah, because he used the special of the Rise Heart and all, used the birth on the Fenrir. But uh, he probably wants to save it for the next turn. Yeah, I wonder, like. What these monsters are you gonna go into right now? Are you gonna summon the Shangri-La? Hold, hold it. Flare metal. Flare, flare metal. Is flare metal. He's putting the. You know what happened last time? He is that. Life points that's, remaining. That's three activations. He's gonna need to do something to get rid of this red eyes flare metal before he can really jump back into this game. That's cool. I love me some red eyes flare metal <laughs> here in the finals of the North American World Championship qualifier. Definitely not something you see every day. So he's got three activations. In match where you expect to see almost all the same cards. <laughs> yeah, Jeremy showing why he's here in the finals. You can't just play standard. Jeremy. you got to have some surprises for your opponents along the way. That red eyes flare metal is so putting work for him. Sequences his next plays. He only has so many activations. He's trying to see if he has enough cash. Taking a moment to consider his options. He definitely didn't have the start that he wanted. I mean, if Jeremy didn't have that Ash Blossom and Joy Springs, things could be going differently here. But it looks like mm -hmm. he did draw Kashira Fenrir. He's going to go straight into battle phase to try and force out uh, the effect to banish the, the flare metal. Crash with the Fenrir. Both the right sauce uh, pumping him up by 100 each. Oh, but then there's his follow up, which is going to be. Enemy control logs, too! Commando Unic! Lars is not out <laughs> just yet. It's still in the battle Let's phase. go! Lars had to get them sleeves up. He's about to go to work. Now Lars has the ability to go after any of his Kashira monsters in his deck, being able to extend into a rank seven play of his own. Now Lars about to cut. Is it Theosis in his hand? He's able to extend into this full combo here. All right. Well, that was all right. Well, that was, uh, that was a nice little cook. All right. Kashira matchup can be so swing. That was a nice little cook. That was a nice little cook. I mean, that's taking advantage of mirror match. Yeah. We've seen a lot of players main decking three copies. One of my favorite cards of all time. When it's just so versatile. Like mirror matches open up unique gameplay scenarios that just wouldn't be accessed otherwise. Especially when you can take control of your opponent's cards or something like that, and and then you know that for, that fits directly into your combo line. That's kind of devastating. Cause you can take a normal like minus one and turn that into like a plus two for yourself or something like that, depending on what your combo line does. Like so that could be devastating. It give you like a tremendous lead. Especially if you do something to the monster and it, your opponent can't get it back. Like you banish it face down, you attach it like we saw with the pearly cards or like any other effect. So it's pretty interesting. But what's he going to do now he has his opponent's monster? So he's using Theosis. So he's going to use Kastira Theosis here, targeting the Fenrir to special summon a Kastira monster with a different attribute. He's going to summon Kastira Unicorn. He'll mm -hmm. be able to use that effect to add Kastira Birth. Which now that's the enemy uh, controller. The effect of Fenrir at this point? Was it another copy of Unicorn? It was Unicorn, yeah. So one of the car two cards in hand is Unicorn. So Lars is probably going to be looking to get this birth off right. the field. Sorry. Lars also has a copy of Tactics still, but unfortunately all those effects were activated in the battle phase. Yep, got to be in the main phase. 
Unless it's triple tackle thrust. Oh, uh, yeah, Lars is, Lars is cooking it up. He's thinking, think, think face. Like he's going to be using the Rise Heart here. He's going to be able to banish um, one of those Kastir cards from the deck. Potentially going for a monster here to be able to touch someone off birth. There is already a Fenrir in the grave, but, you know, maybe wanting access to a different one. We see Lars is on a heavier uh, Kastir engine. He can go for something along the lines of Kastir Ogre. He is thinking about his options mm. here. What will Lars choose? He's use that Rise Heart effect. Let's see what he decides to banish. He is eyeing that Kastira Ogre, as you mentioned. Ogre's pretty like cool. He's down, but he's not out. As we see players playing Kastira Ogre, that also means they're playing Kastira Preparations he's as well. He's definitely making yeah, a comeback. Also be attempting to use its effect on the field. Not really something that a lot of people pay attention to, but being able to... He's basically sending that message, like, like, you're not going to cheat me with a Flare Metal. He's like, come at me, bro. And two, just what kind of cards they're playing. True, true. Mm. Now Lars overlaying the three level seven monsters. Hey, don't forget to get that bat. <laughs> that was expensive. If he would even, oh, yeah. uh, want to go for something along the line Rise of the Dark Arm Dragon. Just oh, yeah, he was like, give it back. <laughs> yeah, you better give yeah, it back. That's uh, expensive, setup. boy. Maybe potentially going after the cards that he lost. Yeah, he, uh, essentially, oh, he was losing a lot of monsters, it seems. From hmm. the previous rise hearts from Jeremy, so he wants to be able to get access to those back. All right. All right, here comes Kastira Birth. He's going to use the effect he's built in that Kastira Ogre that he banished the Kastira Rise Heart. Ogre effect's going to activate, and he's going to add that Kastira Trap from the deck to the hand. I imagine it's going to be Kastira Preparation. These Kastira cards are crazy. Oh, uh, at least he sided it out, baby. Oh no. He could have been banished from the Rise Heart, or he could have sided it out. Nope, there, oh, there it is. Going to grab preparations here. Preparations. Prepar preparations. I love the art of preparations. Preparations is so cool. Like, I love these Castor cards. I'm not going to lie. I mean, of all the meta decks, this is my favorite meta deck. <laughs> but it is a busted meta deck, though. <laughs> I just love to. I like banishing stuff. I like. I like the banishing face down. I really like that. That's like super effective. So Jeremy's going to special summon the Kashir Unicorn. Uses Jeremy's fighting back. Spell card from the deck of the hand. Lars only sitting on 1,600 life points. Jeremy just needs to find a way to do a little bit of damage, and he'll be up one game here in the finals of the North American World Championship qualifier. Grabbing another copy of Kashtira Birth. This has been as possible. You are able to just summon monsters from your graveyard or you're banished every single turn. So a little stronger than uh, Theosis because you're thinking more of a long game. And is this the Kashtira Ogre effect? Yep, that's mm. the Kashtira Ogre looking at the top five. Being Look at that D-Shifter. Um, Starkhold? Yeah, getting rid of the Kashtira okay, Starkhold. That makes that, sense. That actually makes uh, probably a big difference here. I mean, Kashtira is able to access those again via a Rise Heart, but it's not going to be accessible assuming that Jeremy only plays the one copy, which most people do. Okay. True. Now this is going to trigger a Rise Heart since the card was banished. He's trying to get to that those three materials, so he'll be able to fight off of Jeremy's push here. Grabbing another okay. bird. Okay. He's trying to build his weapon up. And he does. It looks like a triple tactic talent. It is a triple tactic talent, and he's going to be able to use that to give me. Ooh. You will pay for your misdeeds. So basically, because he used the econ and was able to take his monster and get all that push from the econ, Jeremy was able to return the favor and take the pluses, take the monster away that was built up by the econ steel with triple tactic talent. Riser will just trigger that's spicy. Now Jeremy's cooking. Hey, that's how main characters cook, or, man. I forgot to Prosperity, so there's plenty of cool targets under there as well. But this is Lars the Rise Heart, but I don't think he's going to get it back. This is Lars's Rise Heart. Oh, Rise Heart, but I don't think he's going to get it back. <laughs> Well, boy. <laughs> a rise heart to attach another material underneath it. Well, boy. <laughs> I guess you better scoop it on up. Yeah. Clarifying which cards belong to who. There's yeah. He was like, make sure you give me my shit back. That's right. Make sure you give me my shit back. Comes a problem. Games two and three. 
Yeah, the give me give me that monster back too. Two. Don't forget. Jeremy Mitchell takes give me back. Give me back. <laughs> I want all my boys in the green sleeves. Champion here at 41. Making sure to clarify before that because it's so easy to make that error. We've seen it happen in previous uh, events of this caliber where the, because the sleeves are so common at this point, the players were asked to re-sleeve into these sleeves uh, that were provided for them. It's very easy to just get them mixed up when card switching mm. control, and there's so many card switching control with enemy control or trick practice challenges. Sometimes it's really easy to get confused as to who, what belongs to who. Yeah, especially in a matchup like this Kashtira mirror match, because there's a lot of, the, the Rise Heart can attach from everywhere. It's going, pulling from both places. You're playing the same cards. You gotta be careful with it, but it looked like they were pretty good at keeping track of you went, went where. Oh, no, they, yeah, they weren't. They found it though. <laughs> Definitely a good thing to look at your deck. Make sure you get it. Make sure it's perfectly legal before you enter that next game. Yeah, that's a great thing to check out. <laughs> it would be so easy for them to have made this mistake. I'm glad both players are conscious of this and are taking care of it right now. Yeah, I always want to make sure to count my cards. They have a little bit of extra time. They have 65 minutes in the finals here, so plenty of time to make sure everyone has the right card. Oh my gosh. That was a really interesting game. We yeah, saw Lars be able to a, force his way through after not the ideal start. Jeremy knowing when to Ash Blossom against the deck. Ash Blossom not necessarily being the strongest card against the Kashir strategy if they ever have access to the monsters. They will usually be able to play through it, but cutting them off from finding those monsters is where you want to be able to use those Ash Blossoms. But yeah, that, that was like about as best of an Ash Blossom as you can have against a hand like that. Yeah, typically going after the right side, going after the Pot of Prosperity, that's where you want to use it. You can still go after Kashir Theosis, yeah, but that's still giving them the body, and they're able to, if it's a Kashtira Unicorn, they're able to go after your extra deck as well, which is not super relevant in the Kashtira Mammoth, but you're like, you use your Rise Heart. Yeah, it's still annoying to have to go through the process of getting that Rise Heart back from your Banish pile. Especially without a Rise Heart. Dude, without a Rise Heart, it's gonna be difficult. You'd have to like take your opponent's a Rise Heart, attach it underneath his material, and get it face up, and then your extra deck, and then use Kashtira Theosis to add it back to your extra deck. <laughs> It's a process. It I mean, is a process, but it is possible. And we saw uh, Jeremy won with Lars's Arise Heart. He so did. It does happen sometimes. I mean, he didn't ever summon his own in that match, he I believe. Did. Didn't need to. That was all triple tactics talents. I mean, that was just kind of a tough break there from <laughs> Lars. But even though his uh, race off got Ash Blossom, he had that triple tactics talent. But it unfortunately, just drew into molar copies of infinite permanence. I think he may have had another copy of. Did he have another copy of talent? Maybe not. But he did, in fact, have another copy of talent. Yeah, just oh, yeah. sometimes you just draw all those non-engine cards and it can be rough. Yeah, not finding the perfect deal to make after getting that opening with the enemy controller. being Not being able to really deal with Jeremy's kickback. He had a lot of resources in hand. He played out his turn to not commit too much to the field to make it as difficult as possible for Lars to be able to clear everything and limit the amount of resources that Jeremy would have. You hear a side there from Jeremy Mitchell. He knows what's on the line. This is history in the making. It is, you only get one North American World Championship Qualifier Champion per year, and you really just instantly get thrown into the Yu-Gi-Oh! Hall of Fame, essentially, where people are going to know your name for years to come. I know my favorite champion, Chris Bowling, but that's from way long ago. It's one of my favorite matches. Chris Bowling versus Shane Scurry. It was the Gladiator Beast Finals, and then he went on to go to represent us at the World Championship many, many years ago. That's probably my favorite one, and this could become an instant classic as well, and we're going to have to see if the players are ready. Looks like they're side deck, they're shuffled, they're drawing their hands. It's almost time to find out what's going to happen here in this game is number so two. Tense. Lars is going to go first. Is he going to put Jeremy on it? Yeah, it looks like he's what's going to happen. Go first this time. Lars has been tilted. In that game number one. Rightfully so. With those dimensional beats he used in the last round. Hey, I understand why that tilt had to come. But now, the ultimate duel. Jeremy can be the champion or Lars can upset. This is the time to do it if it's going to happen. Oh, Prosperity. This is the time to do it if it's going to get done. Prosperity being so ridiculously six. strong in the yeah, Kashira. Prosperity is such a good card. Six cards from the top of your deck. Remember, I sold mine deck, for like 120 or something like that. that uh, but also putting those cards banished that are accessible via a rise heart, giving it that additional protection. Dang. <laughs> look at this. Look at that prosperity. That prosperity is disgusting. <laughs> that prosperity is broken. Theosis. Interesting, that that prosperity was busted. Planet race off in the hand, I believe. 
That prosperity is busted. But that just means unicorn can go after Kashira birth and having Kashira birth for the remainder. He's about to do something broken. What you ideally want? Summon. Looks like he's gonna lead off with Kastira Finrear here. So he's gonna spell someone Search. Finrear to add Kastira Riseheart to the hand. Yep. Like to see the follow up of the activation. Ooh, of the I saw that. Ooh. that he's got Eradicator in his hand. <laughs> I saw Eradicator. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I saw that Eradicator. <laughs> Where does Jeremy want to go? Oh, no. Does he want to just leave up these two? Does he want to come in more to the Is field? Is he cooked? Looks like Jeremy wasn't actually prepared to go first this game. There's still a couple no, of Jeremy's prepared. <laughs> now, he's, he knows what he's got to do. <laughs> Jeremy accepted the mission a long time ago. <laughs> Book of Moon, Dark Hole, Eradicator, and Theosis? I, I think. I'm sure that Jeremy was prepared to go first. There's a copy of Eradicator in his hand. Yeah, <laughs> they saw it. Not knowing, but <laughs> they saw it. Lars lose game one after choosing. They first. saw it. You can kind of guess he's going to choose to go second. They saw he's it. They the saw that. They saw the Eradicator too. Ira. Now he's going to use the effect of Sheer Rise Heart. <laughs> All right. Big bang. Yep. Opting to ignore a potential Nibir the Primal Being, going for that wide play, setting up the. Uh, Shingra on the field, as well as the uh, like the three material arise hearts mm. being able to get this monster. I can smell the roast over there because somebody getting cooked. Copy of Shingra, and then all three of those Shingra into a rise heart. Over there smelling disgusting. Oh my god. Wait. You had to give me a plate to go. <laughs> you gonna be cooking? You gonna be throwing down like this? You had to give me something to go. Dang, look at his hand. I think his hand is all spells. Oh, yes, of course. He's not going to commit resources to the Arise Heart because he can just oh, use it immediately for the Arise He doesn't know. He doesn't know. There it is. There it is. It's right there in the middle. He put it in the middle zone. He put it in the middle zone like he is on Master Duel. He said it in the middle zone like he in Master Duel. Not me, he put four in the back row. Terrifying. Lars draws and dies. <laughs> Let's go. This is the second time he's done this. This is the second time he's done this on a feature match. <laughs> in the standby or in the draw phase rather so Shangra can still summon in the this standby is phase sad. be safe from those copies of Phil Tactics. Damn, damage. this is sad. Cyclone targeting. Ooh, the Book of Moon. That's the mm. one he wants to hit. That is a good one. If he has a monster, no. it's good. Uh oh, and he, but he has a Fenrir. Oh, he has Fenrir and Infinite Permanence. This is something. <sighs> he lost a lot of cards though. But he's got Fenrir though. So Fenrir can get a long way. They're chanting ban Erad in the background. There you go. Ban Erad. Ban Erad. He got eradicated. That's disgusting, man. Oh, I know I know how that I know that feeling. I know his hands feeling real light right now. His hands feeling real light and his hands feeling real heavy at the same time. extremely punished here if he chooses to activate the Shangri-La. Lars not in a bad shape. He's not in a bad shape, but he's been devastated. He's been, he's been, I mean, he hasn't been crushed. He's got cars to come back, but cars to come back. Oh my That card is crazy. Like any card that can take like three or four cards, like, like two for four, two for five. Like that's crazy. But I think maybe setting them all at the same time, or you at least set them one, two, three, four, and not have any hesitation on any of them. He's so I lucky he had a cash tier monster name. He's so lucky because he just because if he if, if he had five, four spells yeah, in the imperm, cut. Absolutely cut. And then he can't draw because if he draw any spells, he's cut. True, true. And now he might lose all his backup plans to that divine arsenal Zeus. Because, yeah, Jeremy's sitting on no cards in hand. I think he's a Fenrir, so it's not the oh, word. Oh, oh, Jeremy's, yeah, Jeremy's got Fenrir in hand. Okay. Oh, that's right, because he added it with the Big Bang. And did he sure did. That's true. Let's see. So even after the Zeus, not the end of the world for Jeremy, this is just a lot of back and forth in this Kashira Mirror match. 
Both these players have probably played plenty of mirror matches on their way here to the finals. And, and they have Both been crushing. They have been crushing every America, opponent Japan, in mirror Japan, matches. Japan, they have been crushing their mirror matches up until this point. Now they both have to fight. Now they both got to struggle. But Jeremy doesn't look like he's struggling. Jeremy looks like he's kind of dominating. Like Lars is the one on the back foot. Because unfortunately, it's not going to be able to the Fenrir will be able to just take everything back. So he's going to use Big Eye to take the Shanger Ira, so he'll be able to beat him up. To Zeus still. Yep. Beat you up. Able to attack for zero. Ooh, and he's going to Zeus damage. his card. So he, you know, it's crazy. But, uh, the See? Did the See? That's why you need to keep your hands to yourself. Stop, to stop stealing other people's cards. And he's going to put Zeus on top <laughs> of the Big Eye. Well. Okay, I like this play. Okay. Because this is what's going to happen, right? In the standby phase, Shang is going to activate, and Zeus is going to be chained. Yeah. And it's not. <laughs> but he did use the Tinker Ira at least. That's interesting here. Because I would assume what he wants to do is clear everything else from the field. Mm. He, might, I was saying, he might not think that those face downs are bursts or something. Maybe he thinks something like infinite permanence or. No, oh, see what he's doing. I don't know. I would have I would have dumped the field too in the standby. Because I would have assumed I would have assumed that they were blessed because he would have because he would have thought because he would have thought I was gonna be blown out. But the dark hole punishing him for not using the Zeus. Too late. It's too late. The hole of darkness has already been opened. Now, Dark Hole, swallow all the monsters. Rip. Oh, I guess that card can't die by uh by effect or something. Emperor. Then it's going to be an immediate flip of Kashira Birth. Yeah, you birth? know Lars is not feeling good now, seeing that both those face towns are dark, hole and birth. You know, yeah, yeah, he's like, oh, I should have dumped it. it. Of a two -way thing. Yeah. Could have set the infinite permits in front. Wait, if he had a. Oh, oh wait, if he dumped it, he wouldn't have had his emperor. That makes sense. Okay, he didn't dump because he wanted to keep his emperor. But but I got. I guess I got the whole idea of dumping from the. Uh, commentator totally but yeah that makes sense that makes sense because if he because he had the emperor him sitting on the field he didn't want to lose his emperor he committed a monster already the layers and now he's going to use that kashtir theosis targeting oh, kashtir unicorn i think yeah, it sucks no cards to his name here it sucks the shangri-ra that's protected itself he is his own zone locked by that shangri-ra jeremy just has to put up the damage at this point <laughs> there's something funny about that of having your the singer iron your side of the field locking your zone mm -hmm. He just has to summon Scareclaw Kashira if he still has access to it. Lars is only at 7,000 from activating that Cosmic Cyclone. Very true. And he's still under the Eradicator. Yeah, any spell he draws the next two turns will go straight to the graveyard. Oh, there's a cop another copy of Kashira Fenrir. Straight Already to the graveyard. <laughs> straight to the graveyard. I love it when they say Yu-Gi-Oh things on a Yu-Gi-Oh stream. Now he's taking a moment to consider what his next option is. He's mere moments potentially away from being the North America. Yeah, I think Jeremy's got this in the bag. Because all he got to do is draw a spell, lose. Making sure like you don't make any mistakes here at the event. Yeah. You don't want to slip right before the end. That's true. Never want to get too comfortable. Check everything. Oh, I was going to say, you can't turn that around, Jet. Like, is that another copy of Birth in the hand? Uh, in a battle. Oh, Bell time. Attack with Not choosing to use again, there's no point. And now uh, an Xyz monster has battle. battle. So that's the more beneficial part that an Xyz monster has battle. It doesn't have to be yours. It can be anywhere on the field if you want to go into Zeus. Wow, I didn't know that. If an Xyz monster battle any anywhere, you can go into Zeus if you got an Xyz monster. Didn't know that. Dang, did he banish the monster that he won with last the last game? The disrespect. Looking like what he's thinking about. Flare metal. That's his boy. Red eyes, flare metal. And, and pass. Draw a spell and lose. Damn. 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 Look. Oh, he did it. Good job. Good job. He did it. Look at him. Yeah, look at the boy. Damn, he can't believe it. Look at him.
Damn, congrats. That's incredible. That's crazy. Congratulations, bro. Eradicator. Busted. Absolutely busted. Absolutely busted. Great job. Set up the Eradicator epidemic virus, hit a multitude of spells, and this was able to claw his way back to that victory. Yes. 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 Absolutely broken. Because when you're playing through these tournaments, it's a, it's like great. a physical drain on you. And at the end, you're just like, wow, it's crazy. Over. I finally did it. You know, he, he did like it with the cash. He did it with the oh, cash. Just incredible for him. I am so. Put my problems in the paper, then pass them around. Loud enough to wake the neighbor, they mad at the sound. Trying to dial up the deputy, mad at my brown. My back at the wall, battling, straddling, blurred lines of where the heat and the fanning begin. Kind of funny what the people call a legend, the government call a weapon, but really he just a man in the end. He just a man in the end. I lay me down to sleep, I pray the Lord that I wake again